About that time, eh, chaps? Righto. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna sit down for a moment while I wait for people to trickle in. Uh, there we go. Hello. I'm all on my own today. Which is a bit weird. Yeah. I stream solo on Twitch all the time, and now I'm just like, oh, I guess it's just me today. All by myself. What's up? <laughs> you thought that was a voice in your head? Aren't there voices in all our heads? Hello, Chris. How's it going? And uh, hello, everyone else as well. A little bit quiet, is it? Hmm. It's slightly quiet. Yeah, I could I could bump it up a little bit. I guess I'm, yeah, hmm. I'll push it up just a touch. Let's see, filters. Let's just nudge that up to uh, four decibels. That'll do. Bam. How about that? There we go. Right, oh, another great build coming up, potentially. And you can't hear me over Diablo 2 RE. Well, that's what you get for playing Diablo 2. Ugh. Right, let's see. Um, right, small violin, yeah. <laughs> How are we doing? Hello, Pavel, as well. And uh, I would read all the names on the screen, but that'll take a while. Uh, music uh, shouldn't be. I have I mean, I've got some lo-fi on very quietly in the background, but you guys aren't supposed to be able to hear that. Most people seem to prefer no music, but you can always put on some music of your own in the background uh, over the top of my voice anyway. Uh, let's see. Uh, how close is Adam and IT2 to partner? It is partnered. We are, um, this channel is now partnered as well. So, um, uh, so yeah. In fact, yes, yeah, Super Chats are a thing again as well. Um, but then also just um, uh, adverts for um, VODs and stuff like that are now a thing as well, which is good. Um, so, yes. Uh, more revenue, all the rest of it. Um, so, yeah. PQ looks good. Uh, what's the PQ? You see a super chat button. Yes, they are return. No obligations, obviously. Uh, did I get an ultrasonic yet? Uh, I did. Um, I can't. Who sent? Who sent it to me? Hold on a sec. Kudu. Dark Knight in. Was that you? It was Dark Knight. Uh, I did get it. Here we go. Hang on a sec. Um, oh, uh, Dark Knight, absolute mad lad, sent me a little ultrasonic cleaner. Um, so yeah, I was very surprised when this thing showed up. It's cool. I mean, it's not big enough to put in like laptop motherboards and stuff like that. But I've been uh, I've been zapping various tools and other things in it during the week to experiment with it. And yeah, it's cool. I like it. Thank you very much, my dude. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I I used it to um, clean screwdrivers and other bits that just get grubby and stuff during use. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I like the built-in timer on it because you just Stick in some, stick in some warm water. Drop the parts in, push the button, and come back in five, in three minutes. So yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, I literally, I did actually stick my glasses in there. It, you've got to. I found it was more effective if you sort of put them in there, then turn them around and give it a second run through. It doesn't like it doesn't get in gaps and stuff like that. But a little bit of experimenting, and I'm sure I can figure out the optimal uses for it but thanks for sending it in dude i really appreciate it while we're doing some show and tell as well uh i'll just grab some other stuff Ugh. uh and mr stevens ah, oh blimey hold on a sec i put my stool up really high and now i can't get back on it uh mr stevens also sent me some uh, amazon goodies which uh I might have a look at while we're building. Uh, he sent me in some cool little angle connectors. Uh, let's see. What have we got? What the hell's that? Oh, that one's empty. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, yeah, I've got some angle connectors, which are 180-degree um, PCI Express connectors. Where's the bench cam? Hold up a sec. Hur. Bench cam. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Stevens sent me these 180 degree um, PCI Express connectors. 
and also there's a there's an 80 a 90 degree ATX uh, bend there as well 24 pin ATX I might try this out in one of the builds today and just see how that works so these guys as you can see 180 degrees they basically turn the connector around so you can route the cable underneath or over the top of the card I'm not I've got to admit I'm not super sold on these I'm gonna sort of have a look at them just to see what you can do with them um, I think they're a little bit circumstantial as to when they're useful, but they are interesting to have. Having lots of connectors like this around is always handy. Um, the 90 degree ATX24 connector though, I'm quite a big fan of that. I'm going to try that one out today and we'll see how that goes. But yeah, big thanks to uh, Quentin Stevens for sending those in. I'll put them back in the box for now. Put that over there. He also threw some gummies in the box as well, so much thank. So yes, all right, down the can. No, the can is Chekhov's gun at the moment. Uh, let's see, face cam. Uh, let's see, what else are we up to? Phone PCB, yes, yeah, you could use phone. I don't do phones, to be honest, though. But you could do other small things in there, absolutely. Uh, the big ones are going for 68 quid now. Yeah, not bad. I mean, uh, if I the reason why I don't own one yet is that when I do buy a big one, I'll get a serious one. Um, you know, like sort of the the largish ones that you can stick a laptop motherboard in. But like a a proper one of those is closer to two or three hundred pounds. I think I'm not. I'm expecting to pay three hundred odd pounds. Like by the time I've got it and the accessories required and all of the rest of it. You know, ones that actually have sweep frequencies, heaters, all the rest of it. You know. Um, so that, that's the kind of thing I'm expecting. Whether or not it's necessary to get a big, ex flashy one like that is less known. But, you know, I feel like um, if I'm if I'm going to get serious, you've got to get serious, you know? So, yeah. Um, we'll see, though. Uh, what's up, Ben Laird? Hi from Scotland. The 24-pin ATX ones are nice. Use them for four. Yep, couldn't find them cheap enough from China to be too economical, though. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I think they're definitely. It's not something I would use on an every on every build, but certainly on some. Like I had a quick look around some of the cases I've got in the shop, and there are quite a few cases where I'm like, it probably wouldn't fit very well. But there are certain circumstances, possibly including this build, where I think it would be quite nice. So yeah, uh, let's see. Where do I get the, where did I get the firmware for that Dell monitor repair? Um, the um, I think. I think I downloaded that one directly. Yeah, I downloaded that one directly from the Dell website. Um, uh, the firmware update on the Dell website uh, was a DAT file, and that was the complete firmware for that monitor. Um, however, I have been told that DAT files are often just update files, not the complete firmware. So take that with a pinch of salt. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I got that particular one done at any rate. Uh, let's see. With the new USC, you could start opening blocked inkjet heads. Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, I don't touch printers. I don't touch them at all. When people come in and they go, you know, oh, what printer do you think I should buy? And I say, I think you shouldn't buy a printer. That's legitimately what I say to people. I say, I give no advice on printers at all. Because whatever, whatever printer I suggest to someone, they're probably going to have problems with it. You can't win. Absolutely unwinnable fight. The, the closest I get is I say to people, buy a color laser. It'll cost you more, but it'll pay for itself like within a year. Easy. So yeah, if you actually need to print, color laser to victory. What's up, Yay Computing? How's it going? Nice to see the 220T coming out again. Yes. Yep. These are the two builds that we actually did a couple of months ago, Caradog and I, and I'm reshuffling them today. Uh, I'll explain more about that in a sec. Um, so yes, I think we're... Uh, where what's the time? Uh, Three fifty-five. I think we're past the 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 customary five to ten minute. Let everyone show up marker. Uh, so yeah, buy a printer that you can buy cheap in cartridges on Amazon. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean I just don't print anything. Is my answer there? But uh, but yeah, I've got a color laser for doing receipts and stuff. But as per, on a personal level, I just don't print anything. So yeah, uh, what do I think about VR headsets? I don't know a huge amount about VR headsets, 
Um, however, I have had a play with one. Caradog has one that's actually in the back room of the shop at the moment. He's got a, um, a HTC Odyssey? No, that's the Vive, which is HTC. Can't remember. He's got the he's got the nice Vive one. I always forget what it's called. Um, and I've had a go on that one. It's it's good fun. I I like it. Uh, I'm still waiting for them to become cheaper before I buy one myself. But I'm into it. I like them. Uh, Caradog's away at a spreadsheet convention today, and by that I mean he's at um, uh, he's at Eve NT in London. Um, so uh, it's um, it's a Eve Online meetup. They're going to watch some Eve tournament at a fancy hotel or something. Uh, looks like good fun, but not my cup of tea. So, yes. Uh, Christopher David, greetings, gents from DC. What's up? You can't get yours to work. Uh, you got the Rift 2 and your 3060 doesn't want to connect to it. Uh, I don't have any... Vive Cosmos, that's the one. Well done, uh, Lupara. Um, yeah, I don't have any experience in setting up or diagnosing uh, VR headsets, I'm afraid. So I can't offer any insight there. So, um, But, uh, yeah, you'll have to carry on fiddling, I'm afraid. Uh, what program to use to test motherboard stability? I don't know. Um, as far as I know, there isn't really any test for a motherboard. You kind of have to prove if you've got a motherboard fault by process of elimination. Um, so it's kind of a case of um, uh, if it's if it's none of the other components, then it has to be the motherboard, you know? Uh, which is not a very good answer, but that's kind of the only answer I've got, I'm afraid. Uh. I need a cleaning cloth. Right, a couple more questions, then I'll start talking about these builds and we'll get started. Uh, let's see. You got the Epson XP720 and you've been using it for over two years. Yeah, I remember when a printer would last you five to ten years, man. Inkjets used to be tanks, but I don't know. I don't know. I just, yeah, I just don't rate them these days. Intel 12th Gen Opinion. I'm very excited about Alder Lake. Um... The reviews, the benchmarks, Alder Lake looks like it's going to be great, man. Um, however, I'm not rushing out to buy one or anything because A, I've already got a, I've got a Ryzen 5800X. I don't need to upgrade. Um, but um, uh, Intel came out swinging with this one. It looks fantastic. My only concern at the moment is that um, I think a lot of uh, I think a lot of Alder Lake speed is in thanks to DDR5. Um, and I have a, and the problem there is that DDR5... Has anyone seen any prices on DDR5 yet? And I don't mean what people have got on pre-order. I mean, uh, a 16 gigabyte DDR5 kit that is in stock, delivered by delivered on Monday kind of thing. Like on hand, ready to ship. How much is a 16 gig DDR5 kit? Because all the prices I'm seeing, it's like twice the price of DDR4. And like by the looks of things, um, you know, by the time you've bought... And like a, a Z690 motherboard is pricey as well. Z690 motherboards, just mediocre ones, are like $200. And it looks like the price of Alder Lake is like 100 to $150 more than an AMD system. Um, and that's just the cost of the RAM and the motherboard and stuff like that. So, uh, like, at face value, just, you know, forget the price, forget the platform, just chip to chip. Alder Lake looks like it's amazing so far. Out the gate, it's really quick. Um, however, I suspect that, um, you know, you're going to pay a premium for it, and it's not a case of, you know, Ryzen 5000 isn't dead, you know, However, Intel, I think of uh, they. I think they've. I think they've given AMD a bloody nose with this release. However, I also agree AMD will come back. You know, like uh, AMD's next CPU, that's going to be DDR5. It's easily going to match Alder Lake. There's not a doubt in my mind. It will meet or exceed Alder Lake. However, if you want to buy the fastest CPU money can buy today, it's the 12900K. You know, that's that's what the benchmarks say. Basically, so yeah, um, power draw. Yeah, that's true. It does. It does. They are thirsty. I'll give them that. Um, I mean, it's it's not dreadful. It's not as bad as some of the previous ones have been. Although that much being said, it's sustained. So, 
Like the previous Intel CPUs were also thirsty, but they weren't they weren't thirsty for sustained periods. So, nah. But on a desktop computer, I I'm tempted to I hesitate to say this, but on a desktop gaming computer, who really cares about CP about energy consumption? Like, bear in mind that if you've got a 3080 or a 3080 Ti or something like that, you're burning 300 watts in, in, in your graphics card alone. And you're quibbling over your CPU using an extra 100 watts than the AMD one. You know, it's just... I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, energy efficiency is great, and I, love to, and I love more energy efficient things. But... Right now, Intel has come from a state of being just literally not competitive to, wow, we just topped most of the benchmark scores with our new CPU. That's pretty good going, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, you, if you got a 9900, if you got a 9900K and a 3060, you don't need to upgrade. And, like, this is something that, um, this is something that Gamers Nexus said in their video. Steve said, you know, you don't need to go out and buy this if you have a modern CPU. You know, just because something new and shiny has come out doesn't mean that what you have is trash and you need to replace it. You know, when people say, "Oh, the new Alder Lake is amazing," you know, it's absolutely it's brilliant and all the rest of it. This is always on the assumption that you have no computer at all and you want to build a computer tomorrow. You know, that's always where I'm talking from. You know, again, I've got a Ryzen five thousand. Um, and, you know, most most of my friends have got decent computers right now. You know, none of us are in dire need of upgrade, so we're not rushing out to buy this. However, if you wanted to build um, the uh, if you wanted to build the fastest gaming computer money can buy tomorrow, you know, that tw even the 12600K, really, really competitive chip. The 12600K is a very exciting CPU as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. It's um, absolutely, uh, absolutely a really good showing from Intel. Uh, it's not enough to break my current uh, AMD. I don't want to say AMD fanboyism, but AMD loyalty. However, uh, it's very exciting to see real competition. Competition is good. That's what we all want to see, and that's what we got. Right. Let's see, your 3950X is okay? Yeah, I mean, the 3950X is still a wrecking machine. I've got a couple of friends who've got 3800Xs and 3900Xs, and yeah, they're still stonking quick CPUs, you know. Uh, I'm going to crack open this can of cider that I've got because I'm tired and I've had a long week of not getting a lot done, so I think I've earned it. Hmm. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to lie, Chris S. Your constant badgering of a can of cider per uh, per episode is not a terrible idea. <laughs> it's not a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's see. Uh, you're hoping your X470 will support Ryzen 6000? I wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, I, there's not going to be another CPU for um, AM4. Um, there won't be another CPU for AM4. But that's not a bad thing if, you know, like, if you want to upgrade your X470 one last time, stick a Ryzen 5000 in it. Um, but yeah, there won't be any more, there won't be any more AM4 CPUs. That's, that's what I'd say. Uh, let's see, with AMD using eight times PCIe connectors, would this cause a problem with a B550 board and PCI Gen 3 riser cable? I'm not sure... If I'm honest, I think a lot of GPUs probably won't care. But if you have a top-end GPU in there, um, then you might run into issues there. Um, I don't know is the answer to that one in all honesty. I haven't done enough experimentation with PCI Express lanes and graphics cards to see what the deal is these days. I, I looked into this a long time ago. Um, because infamously there are there are, there have been one or two builds on my channel and like my old PC for example where I've had graphics cards in eight times slots and people have been like oh it's in the wrong slot and I'm like it doesn't matter it doesn't make a difference to performance however that was like five plus years ago you know that information is very very much out of date now so not sure is the answer to that um, 
perhaps someone else can answer that question. Uh, right, I'm going to start uh, unpacking stuff while uh, while I waffle here. Um, so yes, aren't the refreshes with 3D Vcash supposed to be still on Ryzen 5000? Yeah, I mean, we. I suppose if anything, we might get a 5000... What was it? A 5000 XT series, yeah. 5000 XT series would be my guess. Uh, I don't think there will be a Ryzen 6000 on AM4, though. Right, um, I'll catch up on the chat again in a moment uh, because I could just sit and waffle into the microphone for the next three hours. But I'm going to start building and then I can waffle at the same time. So what I've got today, um, these two computers are the ones that Caradog and I built a couple of months ago, um, show computers for the shop. Um, and I'm going to do some reshuffling today because um, the the 220T, this had a Ryzen 3600 in it and I sold it. Um, I sold the I sold the motherboard CPU and RAM out of this one to someone who wanted to upgrade. Um, uh, a kid and his granddad came in and they were just like, oh, we want to upgrade. We're look, we've got this much to spend. So I'm like, honestly, you want to buy yourself a secondhand 3600? And then I was like, actually, I happen to have a secondhand 3600 which I would be willing to part with. So I sold the 3600 and motherboard out of this PC. So this thing needs rebuilding. So as you can see, I've got a um, I've got a uh, a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite to go in this because this motherboard is 110 pounds right now, and that's a lot of motherboard for your money. Um, so uh, so yeah, I bought a motherboard, and what I'm going to do, I've got another CPU here. This is the last of the 5800Xs that I had in stock. Um, that I bought for a ridiculous price. Uh, I, I bought like, um, Caradog and I between us bought like three or four of these 5800Xs for 300 pounds. Uh, and we were just like, someone must be losing money on these. But, and this is the last one. However, I don't want to put the 5800X into this one um, because the 5800X is going to need an AIO because they're hot boys. And I don't want to put an AIO in this 220T. So. What I'm going to do uh, is put this down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 5600X out of this PC and I'm going to put the 5800X in there and the water cooler in here. And then I'm going to take that 5600X and the air cooler, put it in this motherboard and put it all in the 220T. So that's what we're doing today. So, hmm. So that's the plan. All right. Uh, let's see. AMD's not moving to a new socket for ages. Uh, yeah, AM5, dude. AM5's coming out this... Um, well, not this year, but AM5 is coming out next year. Uh, AM5 is on its way. It's going to be LGA. It's going to be DDR5. It'll be uh, a brand new platform. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if it's going to be AM4+. No, it won't be AM4+. plus. It will be AM5 because the socket will be a completely different form factor. AM4+, plus would imply that it's backwards compatible with AM4. And it will not be backwards compatible. So, yeah. Next AMD will be on AM5. It's going to be an LGA socket. Um, that is... I mean, they haven't announced that, but it's basically all but confirmed i there's like there's been leaked screenshots of it and stuff like that so yeah am5 is late next year yeah i think it's going to be late next year and i think we're likely to see a ryzen 5000 xt refresh at some point in the near future so yeah that's my guess uh bo Brunner, hello from hello from denmark what's up man how's it going let's see if you look at the passive cooler Linus used, it supported AM4+. Plus. Yeah. Don't know, man. AM4+. Plus. Not sure. I'm not sure what to make of that. Oh, well. Uh, when video on the personal computer? Oh, the, the, the heckin' torrent video. Oh, I've got to do it, man. I've I've been really struggling with... with uh, I've been really struggling with um, motivation for video editing. Over the past uh, week, over the past week or two, so I've kind of been bashing out a video for the channel, and then going, "There we go, I'm done. I can go and play video games again now." Um, so yeah, uh, the motivation has not been motivation has not been strong lately. I'm, oh, balls! My camera thing just fell off the bench. One moment, motivation has not been strong this month. I'm afraid. 
and uh, which is it's it's just how it be. Um, you know, oh, sometimes you have a bad month and you don't get a lot done. And I'm having one of those months where it's just a bit of a struggle, you know. And uh, like that's not a cry for pity or anything like that. It's just it's just a slow month. It'd be that way. Anyone who does creative work, they know how it is. You know, some you have your good months and you have your bad months. Uh, bench cam. So yeah, editing is tedious. Yeah, I don't mind. It depends on the video. The problem with the the problem with the torrent video and why that's taking so long is it was a long and arduous build and there's like there's there's over five hours of footage and it's just very difficult to put together a coherent video from that much raw footage so yeah i'm kind of i'm struggling with the motivation on that one but at the same time like on any other video i would have just thrown it out by now However, I kind of made a big deal of that of the torrent, and I'm like, no, I can't not do the torrent video. So yeah, it's gonna get done. It's gonna get done. Hmm. Should you upgrade your 9600K to a 12th gem? Well, the question to that is, uh, yeah, as as Flunkle just said, um, uh, as Flunkle just said, is your 9600K doing what you need it to do? That's the question. Um, you know, I would personally. I wouldn't. I think a 9600K is probably still doing you plenty well enough that you don't need to upgrade. Certainly not for just gaming and stuff like that. And um, uh, I would probably hold out until um, uh, 13th gen or something like that. Wait for the plat because you have the luxury of waiting for the new platforms to mature a little bit first and also for DDR5 prices to come down because... DDR5 is expensive right now, but that price will come down. Mark my words. Give it give it another year and DDR5 will be sort of... I mean, not super cheap, but it'll be cheaper. Right now it's expensive because it's the brand new stuff, you know? So yeah, give them a little bit of time, I would say. Uh, DDR5 needs to mature a hell of a lot. Well, you know, the timings on it look a bit bonkers at the moment. But like, you know, Alder Lake is smashing it. And, it's, and the important thing as well is that Alder Lake is smashing it in benchmarks that are known to respond well to memory performance, which suggests that DDR5 is what's really pushing it, is what's really driving that performance. Hmm. And Dark Knight in as well. Thank you very much for the two quid super chat. Congratulations for being the first super chat. Much appreciated, my dude. Thanks for the two quid. And uh, yeah, thanks again for the heckin' uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Right, uh, let's take some bits out of this. I'm going to take this uh, graphics card out to give myself more space. This graphics card and this Asus here, just in case people are wondering, these are my two 6600 XT graphics cards um, that I bought uh, the same time we built these computers. I got these on on the initial release stock, so I managed to pick these up for three, 370 quid each. Um, so I actually did very well on these. And uh, uh, yeah, they're staying in these computers so I can actually sell them in some good machines. Uh, hardware and box did a DDR4 versus 5. Oh, right. How did how did it do? How did Alder Lake do at DDR4 speeds? I didn't think anyone had done that yet. Uh, Firephone asks, how do I get new customers? Referral from old ones or um, a bit of everything. I mean, I've got the luxury of being a high street store in a... Um, uh, a smallish town surrounded by even smaller towns. So I have the advantage of having the corner of the market, basically. there are I don't have many competitors around me, so all I have to do is not be crap and build it and they will come, basically. So, um, so yeah. However, referral does help a lot. Uh, a lot of my customers do come in and they go, oh, you fixed so-and-so's computer. And they said you did a wonderful job. So I was wondering if you could look at mine. So yeah, that's a thing. Uh, those are beefy coolers for that level of GPU. Um, averagely so, you know. They're, they're twin fan coolers, but the heat sinks on them aren't exactly massive. What is, what is that? Oh, it's a pass-through connector. Sure, why not? Um, oh, let's see. The chat just scrolled. Uh, I'm going to pop out the chat so I can see a bit more of it. I'm not using the pop-out chat against my better judgment and 
This is exactly why I need the pop-out chat, because you get more on the screen. Um, let's see. Other factors and motherboard differences. Yeah, this is true. That will help as well. Uh, what make is the bench camera? The bench camera is a Logitech Brio. Uh, so this is my 60 FPS camera, although we stream at 30 FPS. So we're at 30 frames a second at the moment. But when you watch the normal YouTube videos, this camera is at 60 FPS, which gives that silky smooth video. So, yeah. Um, right, let's see. Uh, okay, let's see if I can read these without butchering names. Um, <clears throat> Tufel Hunden ICT. Sorry if I'm butchering the name. Thank you very much for the $5. Graham, love the channel. How are you liking the new shop? Into F1 at all? If so, what's the favourite team and driver? Next week's side is on me. Thank you very much for the cider, my dude. Uh, let's see. The new shop is going great. Um, I have got another behind the scenes video that I'm probably going that I'm going to release uh, very soon. It's not terribly exciting. It's mainly just me doing some more arranging stuff. Um, but the shop is actually starting to shape up now, so that's quite exciting. And I have um, the one of the last pieces of the puzzle for the shop, which is to get a sofa or something. Um, I'm I've got one lined up. Uh, my family is getting rid of one of their family sofas, and it's probably ideal for the shop. So as soon as their new sofa gets delivered, I'm going to get their old one. And when I think I've got that installed and set up, I think that's the point where I'm going to be like, cool, now to do the shop tour and the 100,000 subscriber special video about six months too late, but whatever. That's how it be sometimes. So yes, um, but yeah, the new shop, um, yeah, all things considered, I'm living the dream. You know, I, you know, all things considered, you know, there's, there's always something I want to tidy up. There's always something that's not done. There's always a million things to do. However, I can't complain. I can tell you that much. So yeah, Christopher David with the $20. Love your channel. Keep up the great stream. Thank you very much, Christopher David. Much appreciated, my dude. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Uh, and Bo Brauner with 70 Donkey Kong Kongs. Um, that's Denmark Corona, isn't it? We've had this conversation too many times. However, thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Is there a message on that one? I've got to scroll down. Let's see. Have a nice beer with your friend. I will do. Thank you very much. And Ben Laid as well with the five pounds. Thank you to everyone for discovering the super chat button again. Uh, it is genuinely very, very appreciated. Very, very much appreciated. Ugh. Right, I've nearly got this hecking cooler off because I'm trying to do it while I read the chat at the same time. It's hard work. Uh, okay, let's see. DDR5 doesn't seem to affect gaming. It's good in some productivity applications. That's very interesting. So in that case, Alder Lake just genuinely is really good then. That's what that says to me. So yeah, uh, the latency is what's hurting gaming performance apparently. Well, that also shows that um, uh, that also shows that there's potentially a lot of um, well, we, we'll likely see Alder Lake and uh, future generations of CPUs potentially going a lot faster as DDR5 matures. Then, so that's that's good news in a way. Um, you know, I mean, it's not great that it's a current bottleneck. But it's good that there's that much potential in it, you know, that because that's what you want. You want potential speed because that means there's more speed to find. Whereas if you're up against the wall, if you're up against a brick wall where it's just not responding to anything, it's like, well, yeah, we've got something that's faster, but it ain't going to go any faster than this. So you can expect the next generation to be very boring. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, right. Oh, blimey. There's, the chat is busy today. I'm doing my best. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, again, talk about pricing as well. Okay, I'm going to have to scroll down. If I, if I miss anyone, I am sorry, but there's a lot to keep up with while I try and build this thing at the same time. This is why Caradog always ends up actually doing the build, because I get stuck on chat. Uh, and I'm going to clear up this thermal paste. Because I shall repaste this thing. Where's my IPA? Right. Um, 
Let's see, did I receive the 100,000 subs plaque? No, I need to I need to get onto YouTube support and say, my dudes, how do I claim it? Because I've not had a notification. So I need to do the thing there. Yeah, Danish Krone, I thought so. About eight quid. Thank you very much. Uh, I discovered the Super Chat button ages ago, but I haven't discovered the money to use it. Oh, no. Well, I appreciate you anyway, Sniff. Thanks for being here. As I say, it's always appreciated, never required. That's always the rule. You don't got to pay to be around here, but I greatly appreciate everyone who uh, who slings me some of their hard end. It's um, it's a it's a big it's a big thing to do, and I always appreciate all of my supporters, all the patrons, and all the rest of it. I don't thank my Patreon supporters very much, but I do I do know they're there, and I do greatly appreciate them, especially with the 2021 YouTube algorithm, which can die in a fire. So yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, is that an X470 or a B550 board? This is a this one's an X570. This is an MPG X uh, an MSI MPG X570, which is a mediocre X570 motherboard. It's fine, basically. Um, it's not terribly exciting, um, but it does the job. This board kind of got slammed for having crappy VRMs on it. Um, however, uh, in my testing, because AMD is fairly power efficient, that's not really the end of the world. Um, this thing, you know, as long as you're not trying to overclock the balls off of your AMD CPU, um, you're not really going to struggle that much. You know, it'll run a 5800X just fine, and the 5800X is one of the more thirsty Ryzen 5000s. So yeah, it, this isn't a motherboard that I'd recommend, but it's fine basically. Uh, let's see. You noticed my FLIR camera recently. How do you like it? It's finicky. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but it's it works though. So yeah, the app is the problem. Um, I, a lot of people have suggested buying something like a cat phone that has a built-in thermal camera. I think that's probably a better solution in all honesty. Um, however, um, I, I, w I wanted to try one of the add-on ones and see how well it worked. Unfortunately, when you don't have anything and you haven't tried anything, you've just got to buy some stuff and see what works. Mm. Uh, let's see. So you had half as many people on stream, so we doubled the amount of chat. You guys sure did. Chat is hectic today, man. You only went on to DDR4 about two years ago. Yeah. Well, DDR4 isn't going to die in a hurry, I can tell you that much. Right. Let's hook this guy out. Let me unbox this 5800X and then I've got something to put this 5600X into. Uh, let's see. There's my knife. Justin Nightingale uh, with the five pound super chat. Thank you very much, my friend. Let's see. Hi there, I'm thinking about building a gaming PC and I just wanted to ask you, what's the best gaming PC case to buy and motherboard? Um, so gaming PC cases, very, very subjective. Buy the case that you like. Is what I would say because the I I heckin I heckin love these boxes. Look at this big old box. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's, hmm. it's got to take up space on the shelf, right? Whatever, whatever. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. Uh, right, where were we? Case and motherboard. Yeah, cases are very subjective. Buy the one you like. I'm just going to put that one down over there. Um, uh, however, my advice would be to buy an airflow-oriented case. So, um, but an airflow-oriented case is basically any of the modern cases that have an all-mesh front panel. So, take for example uh, this case. Let me switch switch cams. So, uh, uh, this Corsair 220T. Uh, airflow case. Triple fans up the front, open front grill. And the case that I'm working on as well, triple fans up the front, open front grill. So airflow case with uh, big old front intake. If you do that, you can't really go far wrong, to be all honest. Um, so yeah, go for an airflow case and basically pick the one that you like. That's what I would recommend. Um, Corsair, Fantex, Fractal, um, you know the big brands. They've all got. They've all got good contenders. Hell, even NZXT have finally gotten on board with the airflow meta. 
It took them long enough, but they did it in the end, so bless their cotton socks. Um, too late to keep me into their ecosystem, but they still did it. There's our 5600, there's our 5800X going in. Uh, I, I'm going to take out this back panel as well because I need to move this onto the new case. Um, right, let's see. Uh, switch back to face cam for a sec because I've got to take this thing up right. Whoop. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is the Corsair 275R Airflow, which has a controversial front panel. I like this case personally. There's cases that I like more than this one, but I appreciate Corsair try to make interesting front panels, and I appreciate them for it. A lot of people just go mesh, and that's it. But yeah, um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, right, let's see. Um, Michael Pilgard with uh, 50 um, Danish Corones. I'll get that right eventually. Thank you very much. Good job. Dans Danske Krona. Cool. Thank you very much. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see. And Chris S, you just reminded me to reprime the sub on Twitch. Yeah, there you go. If you're... Uh, uh, if people want to be in the Discord um, supporters chat room, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you can subscribe to my Twitch channel for free with your Amazon Prime subscription and get all the perks at no additional cost. Right, uh, let's take this back plate off. Uh, right, uh, Jonathan Osborne with the 449 specifically, watching live for the first time in ages. Uh, don't know what I'll watch at 4am tomorrow morning now. Oh no. What are you doing up at 4am, my dude? Thank you very much for the £4.49, though. Ah. Let's see. Liam Whale says, The VRM stuff was overdone. Most people are not running a 5950X with big OC. That is very true. Um, there, there have been some videos that have showed lesser motherboards um, throttling with a 5900X. But... I, I didn't I haven't watched those videos though so I can't really comment because I can't I can't look at their results and tell you whether I think it was a fair test or not um but like I did I did a video a while back it, my crash course on VRM's video I had a 3950x which I tested in a couple of motherboards ranging from really bad to pretty decent um, and I oh, I did a dirty overclock on that 3950X just to push it up to about 240 watts. And all the motherboards were fine with it. So, don't get me wrong, big VRMs are really good. But I think big VRMs are overrated. It's not the end of the world if you haven't got VRMs like a power plant on your motherboard. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's see, Pete Richardson said, my current build is a 4000D Airflow, and you love it. I like the 4000D Airflow. Yep, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, right, let's see. I need to put on the stock brackets for this. And Jonathan Osborne has got a P600S. I'm eh, with the P600. Um, hang on a sec, I'm just going to find some mounting hardware for this thing. I've got a box of them somewhere. But of course I can't find it when I need it. Uh, hold on, oh, the chat's going to roll by while I go and find the mounting hardware for this. I'll tell you what, actually, we can rob it from the new motherboard. Because I'm gonna be, not going to be using it on the new one. Whoop. Let's switch around again. I really need hotkeys for switching cameras. I'm going to put these graphics cards somewhere else before I drop them. Let's have a nosy in here. Uh, let's see. In the sports chat, you can witness the adventures of Postal. You can. Oh, let's get rid of that. Oh, really? Can I not moderate in the pop-out chat? GTFO. There we go. This user's message will be hidden. I want to get rid of the whole user. Put user in timeout. There we go, that'll do. Good enough. Right. Ugh. Let's pop out the chat again. 
This is the problem. Both of my moderators are at a spreadsheet convention. Actually, uh, because you're here, Chris, congratulations, you've been drafted. Uh, there we go. Congratulations, Chris, you're now a moderator. Uh, right, let's see. Now I've got to scroll backwards to find what people were saying before all of that spam. Oh yeah, we were talking about the P600 as well. Um, yeah, so the P600, it's a cool case. Um, I like it because it's got the um, um, the space for a DVD drive up top, which is uncommon on a modern gamer case. I prefer the P500 though myself. Ah. I very much liked the P500 when I built in one of those. It's uh, it's a big case, but it's also just very clean and very swish. I think it looks smarter than the P600 personally, but again, cases are incredibly subjective. Buy what you want is is my advice. Ah, uh, that's a good looking motherboard. Right, I'm gonna have to scroll down to the bottom of the chat. Sorry if I've missed anyone. So yeah. Uh, right. Uh, have I played DRG since the new update? I haven't. I'm going to play it a bit later on today, though. I've got some friends who I'm probably going to play it with later on. Right, I'm going to steal these mounts and put them on the old motherboard. Doo -doo. Ugh. Right, who needs a DVD drive? Not many people, but if you need it, you need it. That's the thing. Right, have to ask wh whose cider am I on? This is Stoford Press. Uh, Stoford Press is um, a decent premium cider that's available most in most places in the UK, and I really like Stoford Press. It's probably my favourite common cider, um, and by common cider I mean something that you can just buy at a supermarket. You know, it's not um, I. Anything better is going to be like a craft cider that you can only get in certain places at certain times and things like that. But yeah, I'm uh, I very much like I very much like it. I'm going to go ahead and put the mounting screws for this esports cooler on here as well. Is that the right way around? That way around. Only spam you've seen, yeah. Well, we don't get trolls and spammers in these in these chats very often. It's pretty uncommon. However, at the end of the day, uh, when they show up, you kind of need someone to deal with it. And I've got my hands full at the moment. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. USB DVD drives share across multiple devices. Yeah, that's true. Um, will AMD lower CPU prices? I, I don't think they will, ZX Spectrum. I don't think AMD will lower their prices. I don't think they need to, quite frankly. Um, Alder Lake is good, but the additional cost of the platform currently negates um, their performance advantage, in my opinion. So, while, I mean, obviously, if they lowered the prices, then thumbs up, that's awesome. But I don't think they need to lower their prices. Right, uh, I've stolen the mountain hardware from this. I'm going to put this to one side. I'll put that down there. So now I can put that mounting hardware into uh, this motherboard. Right, I'm gonna hold this back here. Back plate on. And if I can just get one of these on, I can let go of everything. Uh, Although the design varies for these hold down brackets, the actual mounts do not. So they're completely interchangeable between motherboards. I've got a box full of these. Uh, let's see. Lian Lee Lancool 215. Uh, I like the Lancools. Yeah, they're pretty good. I'm a very. My, my Lancool 2. Man, I'm so happy I bought that case. I didn't like it. Even when I bought it, I didn't like it. But after reviewing it, I was completely sold on it. Sure, a lot of the components are kind of DLC, like the heckin' DLC USB Type-C port. That can go away. However, um, my Lancol 2 is, sits out on the shop floor at the moment as a show PC. And it is an absolutely stunning computer. And it gets, you know, everyone who comes in 
you know, the the Land Cool 2, that's the one that they go, wow, look at that. You know, and like, if, if you know, anyone who comes in and is just like, oh, that one's pretty, you know it's doing its job. And it's, yeah, very, very cool computer. So, yeah. Hmm. Um. Oh, God. Dark Knight, you've got an Inwin case. Yeah. Inwin are the mad lad case builders. They are the maddest of lads. Right. Um. Let's see. I need to fit a water cooler to this. What do you think, people? Shall I top mount the water cooler or front mount it? I'm going to get it out the box so we can see how it fits up the top. I I can't I I prefer front mount for water coolers because I think it balances the case better. But uh, let's unbox the thing and see how it looks. Let's move up the bench a little bit because I'm running away from the camera at the moment. Uh, right. Do 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 do. Uh, people are linking my Twitch. Thank you very much. 5800X, 299 at Micro Center. Yeah. The 5800X, it keeps showing up at ridiculously low prices. And I don't know why. Um, the 5800X, one, of the, it's such a mad lad CPU because it's a pain in the ass to cool, but it's a pocket rocket as long as you can keep it under control. If you can keep it cooled, it's fantastic. I love it. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, what about motherboard? Oh, yeah. Uh, motherboards. Oh. Um, so, for a motherboard, uh, let's see. For Intel, I mean, if you're buying a new Intel, really, you need to go with a Z series motherboard. So, uh, like for Alder Lake, it will be Z690. Um, and then uh, Z590 or 490 for 10th or 11th. What is it? Um, uh, what's Z590? Is that 10th and 11th gen? And then Z490 for 9th gen, I think, isn't it? Either way, a Z series motherboard. Um, it's kind of mandatory for Intel because uh, Intel is stingy and you can't have XMP unless you've got a Z series. Um, so, yeah, there's basically, if you're running a K-SKU Intel chip, there's no point in having a K-SKU Intel chip unless you have a Z-Series motherboard. AMD are more generous. For AMD, um, a B550 um, is currently the best place to be. This is an X570. Um, however, X570 doesn't offer a huge amount of meaningful advantages over a B550. And B550 motherboards are currently newer. So they generally offer the best bang for buck, in my opinion. Right, we can do that. Or I think on this one we can go we can we can go for the low mount. If we go in like that, and we can do uh, how how can we twist that around in a way that gets these hoses working nicely? I think those hoses will just bend as required. That's gonna do that's gonna do that and bend around the uh, graphics card. I think that will look good. I'm gonna go for that. So, as we all know, hoses up is a very controversial approach. It's completely fine. See, I quite like that look as well because if we go hoses up, because the hoses are the highest point in the loop, we won't have any problems with it, no matter what anyone says. This is completely fine because the highest point in the system is still here. The only time that you need to watch out is if the pump is the highest point in the system. So if you had a small form factor case and you had your if you had your radiator like down the bottom of the case like that, that's a no-no. You can't do that because all the air will gather up in the pump and die. However, this is perfectly acceptable. And I'm actually going to do that because that gives this nice pleasant loop up the top of the case um, instead of having it go across the middle. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, top mount is an option. Um, front pipes, top, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Sai? How's it going? Uh, top mount, um, hang on a sec, let me get my orientation down. That would go like that. Uh, 
Don't forget, we've got to put fans on this thing yet as well. That would look okay, actually. Um, and actually, that would mean we can have extra fans in the case because we'd have the fans on the water cooler and we'd still get the front fans. Yeah, I'm actually coming around to that idea. Yeah, go on then, we'll top mount. I think top mount everyone likes. So yeah, let's top mount. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to change the... Let's see. I'm going to mount up the fans and the radiator, and then we'll do that. So I'm going to put that out the front. So that's going to go there. That's going to go there. Eh. Eh. Move this out the way. And I'm going to turn it all around so I can get to it. Oh. Right, and yeah, you guys can see what I'm doing there. That looks good. Right, uh, catching up on chat a little bit. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, H570 and B560, they do support XMP, I believe. However, um, although you can have XMP, your memory speed is still limited to like, 2666 if my memory serves me or 20 feet 2333 for the h series so you've got xmp turned on but your memory clock speed clock speed is still so low that you just don't get any benefit from it and there are measurable benefits to having your memory running at like 30, uh, 3200 plus you know 3000 is the minimum standard really 3,000 up and you're, and you're fine. But if you're below 3,000, you're leaving performance on the table. It's that simple. Ugh. Let's unpack some fans. RGB fans. Not on this one, I'm afraid. The front fans and the rear fan are RGB. However, um, this is not an, an RGB edition cooler. I bought the cheapest one I could find because um, this computer is going to be priced to sell. I want to sell this thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange these fans. I'm going to sandwich them between the radiator and the top of the case so they won't be visible. And that's the trick there. So, yeah, these are fairly cheap Corsair fans. But to be honest, Corsair don't make any crap fans. So anything with the Corsair brand label on it is going to be pretty good. Well, no, that's a lie, actually. Some of the stock three pinners. But all of these ones that come with the water coolers are pretty good. So yeah, ah, right. Uh, let's see, B560 and H570 specifically do allow proper memory, OC and XMP without limits. Oh, okay, fair enough, I stand corrected. Yep, they obviously changed that after everyone uh, kicked off. <laughs> Hello, Zoe. Ah, oh, my favorite po podcast, One Guy Talks Tech. Look, Caradog's at a spreadsheet convention and hopefully he's having a good time. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, Corsair 200R fans, meh. Yeah. That's right. He's, um, Caradog is at the uh, Eve, Lund uh, Eve NT, I think it is, in London. So, as in Eve Online spaceship simulator game. Right, I'm going to put that. I need to thread these fans through the back of the case. Hang on a sec. I'm going to hang all of this off the back of the counter slightly. And then just angle the camera so it can still see what I'm doing. So this way I've got access to the back of the case down here. Right. Let's just thread these wires and then I'll try and catch up on the chat again. And that's going to go there. Pull that through. Right, that's those lined up. And then I'm also just going to make sure that I've poked through the uh, wiring harness for the pump as well. Because the problem with top mounting is you block all of the access to the top of the uh, motherboard, which is a bit vexing. Right. I don't need to pull that through quite yet as long as it's threaded. Uh, hang on, I've got to do some fiddling with wiring, which is very difficult to show on camera. 
Come on. The the RPM tail from the pump needs to be threaded back through. And it's really difficult to grab hold of. There we go. Alright, let's pull some slack through on that. And I want to get that plugged in. CPU fan one. Connect. Ugh. This is the worst part of fitting a water cooler. There we go. Right. The wires are in place. We can continue. Ha. Huh. Okay, right. Let's get some fittings out. Ah, oh, Dark Knight in. More RGB, do it, do it. I don't have any more, my dude. Thank you for the two quid, but I don't have any more RGB fans to put in this thing. I've already put in RGB fans. Right, uh, let's just empty this little bag out here. I do like the amount of screws that Corsair water coolers come with. You don't need all of them, but uh, they're very generous. They don't, they don't cheap out. Credit where it's due. Corsair stuff can be a bit overpriced sometimes, but they're not stingy. All right, let's put that there. And I'm just going to loose fit these screws so we can start getting things in. So it starts holding in place. Uh, right. Do, do, do. GTX 1660, 6 gig. $533. Oh, ouch. I was looking at graphics cards today and I was also very, very sad about the cost of them. I'm kind of stuck here is that, yeah, like I've got to do a, I'm, I'm specking up a gaming PC for a client this week and the budget is about a thousand pounds, which is basically a thousand US dollars because it's about pounds to dollars for computer hardware. Um, and, uh, I was going to put one of the 6600 XTs I've got here in it, but it I kind of it kind of occurred to me, well, I'm kind of stuck in a place where I'm just like I don't want to sell these because it'll cost me a huge amount of money to replace them. But what good are they to me if I don't sell them, you know? Right, come on. Get in there. Oh, that's the wrong hole again. I'm having a terrible time with this water cooler. Let's move down a little bit. Where am I mounting? I want to move it forward. Uh, what on earth are these mount holes? Okay, these rails are just not quite lining up where I want them to. I'd have to move it colossally forward. How far back do I... Okay, that'll work. Let's do that. As soon as I get this screw in, I can relax again. There we go. Whew. Right, let's see. Uh, RX 570 is really fun for overclocking. I haven't tried overclocking an RX 570. I did like that uh, graphics card, though. I, it was very good value for money for quite a long time before the world ended. There was a 1660 for £250 today. Yeah, I mean the going rate, I mean the 1660 is comparable to a 1070, so it needs to be like what, 200 pounds or something like that, to be good bang for buck. That'll do. Let's tighten that up. Whew. Alright, that's in. Right, that memory is not coming out. <laughs> that lives there now. Uh, right, let's change out the mount on this uh, um, water block. That's not... Is that it? Yep, there they are. GPUs are going to get more expensive. Uh, we'll see. I mean, how long can it last, man, really? Surely we're going to reach a point where everyone who needs a GPU has bought a GPU. You know, surely we're going to reach that point where everyone has 
bought a new graphics card and the demand actually starts dropping. Uh, uh, you caved and you bought a 6600 XT for 590 euros. Oof, that's a lot, man. The 6600 XT is a pretty decent card. Um, I've done some testing with the 6600 XTs I've got, and I found them to be okay. I thought they were pretty good. Um, you know, but I'm not convinced they're worth the price they're currently going for. You know. Ugh. Come on, I'm going to stick my thumb in this thermal paste in a minute. You watch. There we go. Right. And we'll stick on these. No click. Click for me. There we go. And other side. Ah, snap. There we go. And now we need some hooks. Just loose fit those. All right. That's ready to go on. And praise the gods... I've actually got it the right way up. And I don't have to turn everything all around. Oh, that's awkward. That's only just clearing the bottom of the rad there. That might be an issue. Okay, this one's not lining up because everything is very loose. Let's buzz this one down a little bit. And then we'll try and get this guy lined up. Oh, I missed. I missed the hook. Oh, it's not clearing the rad. Everything's ruined forever. We might have a problem, Houston. We might have an issue. Hold up. I'll look at the chat again in a sec, or I'll re back read the chat in a sec, but... Okay, there we go. It's over the hook. Let's try that again. If I can get... If I can get... There we go. That has just slipped under the radiator, which is what I needed it to do. This is... Um, this is one of my grievances with Corsair cases. This is a Corsair water cooler in a Corsair case, top mount is the meta, and it doesn't fit very well. All Corsair, all Corsair cases need to be like just 10 mil taller, like just one centimeter higher, and pretty much all of your fitment problems would disappear. But they're all just a tiny bit too short. It's very, it's very vexing. Right, that's on. It's good. All right, we're good. That is in. Uh, right, let's stick. Let's do the peel. Hey, lovely. Okay, right. I'm going to drink some cider and back check. Hmm. 3090 FEs are quite easy to get hold of. Yeah. The the fans edition cards are doing quite well, mainly just because it's becoming too much for Borlake -like to scout them. Um, so yeah, that's definitely your best option. Uh, these Corsair water cooler fittings, normally I quite like them. This was a bad example of it just because of clearance. Personally, I'm still thinking I should have front-mounted this. If I'd front-mounted this, I wouldn't have had that problem. So, yeah. However, yes, I do wish that Corsair... Like, uh, where's the where's the Intel mounts gone? Yeah. See, the, the four-bolt pattern, I don't understand why Corsair don't use an AMD version of this four-bolt pattern and just go four bolts. 
Um, I don't understand why they feel compelled to use the clips um, because there's no benefit to it. Two, two prong hold down is bad. It works, but it's bad. So yeah. Mm. Right. Do do do. Silly that we've got to take the AO off to change the RAM. Yeah. See, again, if we front mounted, we wouldn't have this problem. Are we going to move it? What do you think, chat? Should we front mount it instead? If Because also, not only is the RAM not removable without taking the water cooler out, but the water cooler itself is a pain in the ass to move right now. Yeah, people reckon move it. Leave it be, be done. Mm. I'm seeing more yeses than noes. Yeah, the chat has spoken. Mm. I'm going to move it. Yep. If the tubes touch this GPU, move it. Well, they won't because they'll do that, basically. These things have got a lot of flex on them. So yeah, they'll 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 move around. Hypothetically though, where's the um Let's get the old sapphire pulse in there. That's gonna go there. So that'll sit there, basically. That's how that will look. Everything is upside down, obviously, but you get the idea. So I mean I guess that's kinda gonna push down on the graphics card, but it'll get nudged up by the power cable going in there. I mean, it's fine, but I just think, yeah, I'm I'm thinking front mount. The side has spoken, yeah. Active backplate or just a plastic cover? Uh, ooh, good question. It is a metal backplate on this. Let's see. It is metal, but it is not active. So yeah, this is a proper metal backplate. But there are no thermal pads. It's not transferring any heat into there at all. Because if I uh, if I look down in the gap, I'm not going to bother focusing the camera. But if I look down in the gap, there's no thermal pads uh, transferring heat from the back of the card into this bracket. This is purely a stiffening bracket. So yeah, um, you could call it just cosmetic alone. However, these do stiffen the cards drastically. So add thermal pads. Probably could. I might do if it were my card, but yeah. Anyway, okay, let's move it. Let's move it. Just buzz out these screws. And that one. So, round we go. Front panel off. Oof. Boy needs cleaning. Say. So that's going to come out. Let's just pull these uh, fans out. Come on, out you come. There we go. Right. So we go into going to do that instead and we're going to bolt straight through the fans and straight into the rad so I need to take some screws out of these fans Thirty eighty Ti is supposed to have rotten VRM cooling um, yeah I've got mixed opinions on this um, I have um, I have 
had casual looks at my 3080 Ti's um, temperatures while it's been under load, and it seems to have been okay. Um, I'm also on the fence as to whether I want to um, overhaul it or not. Um, like, w you'd void your warranty if you take it apart, but also, I feel like the chances, it, you know, we, you know, we are all people who know. Well, if you're accustomed to taking things apart, I feel like the chances of breaking it are nil. So I'm kind of in the mindset of I'm probably going to roll the dice and put on some new thermal pads because I would rather do that and prolong the life of it than have it than knowingly let it run really hot. So, but that much being said, I haven't done anything with it myself yet. So time will tell on that. Where does the air bubble go to? It goes to the highest point in the system. So yeah, we've been mounting in this way for years. Never had any problems. This screw is not locating. There we go. You do not void the warranty to open the device. Um, I know, I think it's EVGA that have a policy where you're allowed to repaste your card. But... Can anyone confirm on a um, like on a Founders Edition card if they're that generous? I'll be impressed if they are. Thrilled, but impressed. Now let's. Uh, I need to loosen these screws so it can move. There we go. So yeah, you can put your hoses high or low. It doesn't make a difference in the vast majority of cases. Um, the big no-no is bottom mount radiator. That's what you can't do. I've been doing them this way for years. So of many, many, many OEMs. And it's been fine. I'll die on this hill. All right. Let's just take those out. Do-do-do. Uh, yeah, as Chris said, um, we both got ours on uh, found. We got Founders Edition prices from Scan.co.uk, so we actually paid MSRP. So uh, I mean, obviously, a um, thousand and thirty GB pounds is still a lot on a graphics card, but we also had thirty seventy um, Founders Edition cards that were full hash rate, which we sold for nine hundred apiece. So. <laughs> We ended up upgrading from 3070s to 3080 Ti's for like a couple of hundred pounds, 150 pounds, that kind of money. We did, we, we did all right. It's pretty good. I'm very happy. Normally, I'd never spend a grand on a graphics card, but I had an opportunity to get one at such a net agreeable price that it was no problem. <clears throat> all right, let's see. Uh, so you buy a crossy water cooler, and yeah, uh, hmm. in the UK you might have to take them to small claims for that warranty. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, so now I'm a scalper. Uh, I'm a scalper in that I scalped it to a miner because no gamer would pay nine hundred quid for a thirty seventy. Um, so yeah. Um, it wasn't worth it wasn't worth that much for a long shot. However, miners will pay that much because it's a full hash rate card. So, uh, in fairness, I scalped it to a Bitcoin miner or whatever they're mining these days. So that was my defence there. I wouldn't have done it were it not for the fact that I could get a 3080 Ti. So that was my justification. But the graphics cards in these computers that I'm selling, they are not going at scalper prices. These computers are not being marked up for the graphics cards that are in them. Right, that is now front mount. Um, so that is much more agreeable. Uh, let's get this thing closed up so we can start work on the other one because we're hecking an hour and 20 minutes in, boys. What the hell? Right, that goes in there. 
Let's get this one closed up so we can make a start on the other one. Uh, where are the screws for the graphics card? Screws, there it is. And plug in. There we go. Now we've got to just close up the back. Right, you got the money spent, but it's pulling the trigger on a Grand Plus graphics card. Yeah, that's a big mood. That is a big mood. As I say, I did it because I had an opportunity and, you know, because I do game streams, I feel like I use it. If I wasn't a game streamer, I probably wouldn't have upspecced my graphics card so much, though. I can say that much. Right. Let's tweak this and get that guy plugged in. Right, is that all going to flatten? It will. That'll do. That'll do just fine. Uh, <clears throat> back panel. Right. In the UK, curries and scans are the two good shops for GPUs. That certainly seems to be the case. Curries are surprisingly good for buying stuff from. Like, obviously, you don't want to buy a laptop from them or anything like that. Or, you know, I, I don't recommend that the average person goes there to buy a computer. But if you want to buy components, they seem to have them at agreeable prices. They're doing well to actually provide a consistent place to buy stuff from at a reasonable price. Ah, uh, dust filter. Uh, what PSU is in there? Uh, it's got a Be Quiet something. Uh, um, it has a mid-ranger Be Quiet in there. It's nothing particularly exotic, but it'll handle the hardware that's in there. You don't really need to go super up spec on your graphic on your power supply unless you're running a like a 3080 or higher or AMD equivalent, of course. Uh, the 5800X, although it's a bit thirsty, it's not thirsty enough to require you to up-spec your power supply. There we go. Oh. Slip. Right. Let's uh, arrange super quick, just so you can see what we've done there. That should work. Bam. There we go, that looks quite nice. So yeah, if we'd gone hoses down, we would have had to kind of snake around, and it can work. Um, I was running hoses down in my NZXT H500, and it was okay. But this looks nicer, in my opinion. And again, the important thing is, hoses are at the high point, so the air doesn't gather in the pump. That's the important part. Mm. All right, let's see. Your granddad's still running a 70, uh, 770 with a 3700K. Yeah, that's a good combo, to be honest. Um, VRAM is his main limit. Yeah, I bet. If he's running at 1080p, he's probably okay. But if he tries to go any higher than that, yeah, he's, he's going to fall over. Hmm. Need longer hoses for that, potentially. Yeah. At least it's not like the old... Um, luckily... Um, Although this is not the newest, actually it's newer than I thought it was going to be, this water cooler. I, I was, I didn't think about it, but part of me thought it was going to have one of the even older design heads on it. But yeah, the old ones like uh, this guy back here, these hoses were huge thick garden hose things. And uh, they were terrible for routing. Right, I'm just going to gather up all the spare screws I've got into this bag so I can keep all the parts together. Because obviously, when I sell this computer, I need to sell all of these fit. I need to keep all of these fittings with it. 
because I'm not that I'm not that guy who sells you a computer without all of the spare fittings. Because that's a dick move. Okay. Let's stick the uh, window back on that. Uh. Some white dust in there. That oh, looks nice. All right. Uh, let's see. Sorry if I just made anyone violently ill by lurching the camera around like that. I sometimes forget when I'm on live stream and I treat the camera like I'm on the recording and I'm just shifting camera positions. Uh, window. Whoop. Let's see. Is 1920 by 1200. Yeah, basically 1080p, but slightly above. 1920 by 1200 is a really nice resolution. 16 by 10 is awesome, man. I miss my 16 by 10 monitors. They are super cool. Fire it up. Yeah, I guess I probably should. We'll do a quick test run on it while I tidy up. I'm just going to quickly wipe down this. Uh, oh, this needs cleaning on both sides. Oh, that makes me sad. Okay, we'll clean it. We'll clean it. Ugh. Right, I've flipped the I've flipped the glass panel upside down because now I can lean on it. Right, uh, Mr. Sheen, same stuff you'd use on your coffee table. Tempered glass is fantastic because you can just buff it clean and when it's super clean it's crystal clear I never get tired of it tempered glass was the best thing to happen to PC cases because plastic side windows were bad man they were terrible Ugh, right flip it over and put it on the right way up Get it settled. Look at how clean and shiny it is. Thing of beauty, joy forever. Now you've got to put on the the glass panel thumb screws without putting fingerprints on the on the side panel. But the theory is the Mr. Sheen stops you from it rejects fingerprints. Not forever, but it certainly inhibits them. Come on. There we go. Am I sure I'm not sponsored by Mr. Sheen? I'd like to be sponsored by Mr. Sheen. <laughs> like seriously, if Mr. Sheen Gate offered me money to shill for them, I would do it. Because I believe in their product, man. It works. It works. That would be the funniest thing ever. That would be the best thing ever. I love it. The problem is, is that if I was sponsored by them, ugh, people would start to doubt whether it was actually effective. Because they'd be like, oh, you're just saying that because you're sponsored. Because that's one of the problems. When you see a, um, a channel that is sponsored by a product, you see them using the product, and you're never certain if they really like the product or they're just sponsored by it kind of thing. Or rather, if they really like the product, but they're only using it because they're sponsored. Ugh. Okay, um, I need to plug in the capture card. Bam. Ah. <laughs> 
to you guys talk tech brought to you by Raid Shady Leggings. Okay, let's see. Um Hmm. There? There? I'll be back in a minute, everyone. I'm looking for the capture. Properties. I'll have to manually specify the resolution. I'm using the crap capture card because actually I could use the cam link because we don't have the we don't have the big camera hooked up today. And so let me switch to the cam link. Stand by everyone. Do not adjust your television set. Service will resume in a minute. Bam. There we go. Bam. Oh, that's the Brio. Well, that'll do. Now you know I'm here. Okay, what does that say? Um, let me see. CPU has changed. Yeah, sure. 5800X, that's all good. Uh, oh, heck, I need a keyboard. Uh, right, what do we need to do? F1 to run setup. Uh, sure, let's F1. F1. I might need to restart. I'll just try plugging the keyboard into a USB 2 port instead. There we go. All right, it works. Uh, XMP, please. Bam. <clears throat> and that'll probably do it, actually. I'm just going to save and exit. And that should boot up into Windows now. Mm. Uh, am I using my Spectrum now? Oh, uh, ZX Spectrum, that is. Whoop. That green screen is the um, uh, the Corsair cam link, or the Elgato cam link. That's what it does when you change resolution. It's very annoying. The RGB fans covered by the RAN. Oh, see, that's the problem when you do a setup like this, is do you have the fans inside or outside? Because while we wait for this thing to decide on what it's doing, if I turn it round, we get the fans at the front. So do you want the fans visible through the front grill or do you want them visible on the inside? That's the question. Um, and it's kind of difficult. I think visible through the front grill makes more sense, but it's tough to make that decision. So yeah, what do I use the demo PCs in the shop for? Uh, well, to sell is gonna be the plan. Um, this week I'll actually get price tags on these and they will be available to buy. I'm actually, I, I want money. I've, I've put, I've spent money on these and I need to get that money back. So yeah. Um, I like the way the fans half, yeah. I think, um, I think fans at the front looks better because if you're looking in the side, then you've got something to see. Although that much being said, having a blank front, but visible fans on the inside, oh man, I don't know. I'm not going to change it now in any case. We'll decide later. Has this thing heckin' booted up? If there's no if there's nothing visible, I'm just going to assume it's working. I think this is the cam link trolling me. I'm 99% certain the cam link is playing silly beggars with me. So you saw it post, it works. I'm moving on. Um the cam link is 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 the problem here. I'm 99% certain of it. Um but yeah, you saw it post, it'll be fine. That's good enough for me. Yeah, it's booted into Windows because I pressed the power button and now the hard drive light is flashing away as it shuts down. There we go. So, yeah. Mm. Right. Give me the give me a price, man. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's um let's count this up, shall we? Uh calculator. So 
Let's see. Uh, power supply, I don't know, 50 quid. Um, case, um, I originally got these at a knockdown price. I'll, I'm going to price it aggressively. Um, however, I have put RGB fans into this. So no, I'm going to price it up. So 70... I think... £70 for the case, because it's a premium case with RGB fans. I think that's quite generous, personally. Um, 5800X, 300. Motherboard, uh, Modera X570 motherboard, 130. Being generous, maybe 140. You could find an X570 motherboard for 130. Let's go with that. Uh, RAM, 60, a basic 16 gig kit, of course, their memory. I don't know, £60? Whoop. Uh, the fans cost stupid money to buy. The fans are very expensive. However, I got those on sale. Um, I managed to score them on a sale. So, yeah. Mm. Um, what did I just add? I added on 60 for the RAM. 60 for the RAM. Um, one terabyte SSD in there. You can find them cheap. I don't know how much I paid for that particular one. I'm going to say... Hmm. I'll err on... I'm going to call it 80 quid. I'll be generous. Um, right. Then the water cooler, 100 pounds. I think I got it for like 90. Uh, and then that's just the graphics card, which um, I originally paid 370 for it. But given the cost and price of graphics cards, 400 is a steal. So 400. So I'm calling the list price for parts 1190. So I think I think I would I'm probably going to put this out in the shop on the shop floor for 1300 because I think 110 pounds is reasonable for that. 110 pounds profit. So yeah, 1290 so twelve ninety, yeah, that make that looks a lot less than thirteen hundred. You know what? Twelve ninety. I think twelve ninety is a fair price for that. So yeah, this will probably have twelve ninety on it. That's uh, Great British pounds. Um, so yeah, you think I'm being too generous? This is true. I mean, I think a uh, hundred pounds for a hundred pounds build cost is very competitive. Um, and the thing is, at the end of the day, uh, I'm kind of pricing. A I'm trying to price against what you could just go to something like PC Specialist for. Now, I know that this has got more in it than a PC Specialist, but yeah. Free shipping? No, afraid not. That's the thing. I couldn't do free shipping and stuff like that. How much for the CPU? £300. So yeah. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what to charge for shipping on something like this. I've got the box for the case, so I could box it up but I don't have a lot of experience with shipping PCs around the country. Mm. You might get 1350 or 1400 Maybe. For a shop, you'd say 1500 Yeah. It's a bit imbalanced. I, I, think, I think calling the 6600 XT a 1080p card, I think, is unfair. I was running Deep Rock Galactic at full graphics at 140 FPS with the, with this graphics card. Well, specifically with uh, the other one I've got with the Asus. Um, this Asus 6600 XT, Deep Rock Galactic, 1440p, 140 FPS, ultra graphics. I know it's not great at 1440p in everything, but... The, the 6600 XT is more than capable of 1440p. So, yeah. I, th I think this thing got a bad rep, personally. So, yeah. Ugh. Let's see. 1400 with some nice e-waste peripherals. Yeah. Missed the CPU. Yeah, no, 300 for the CPU. Yeah. Sad to say, £1,500 is a normal price. Man, I think I am too generous. But, yeah. Mm. That's the thing as well. Uh, goofy balls of fire. You just hit the nail on the head. I'm in rural Dorset. 
That's the thing. If I was a boutique store in London, absolutely, I'd get more for it. However, um, you know, sometimes, I mean, the other thing as well is that I'm not building computers to, um, for money as my primary income. It's an extra thing on the side. Um, so a hundred pound profit is okay with me. If I can get more for it, I would. But then also, you know, I could sell it for say, we could go in at say 1300 pounds and be a 110 profit actually a bit more because there's a little bit more on all, all the parts. So about up approximately 110, 120 profit. But also, um, if someone buys it, um, you know, I can sell a monitor, keyboard and mouse with it, a little bit of markup on those. Um, then if the customer has, if, you know, if they've got an existing laptop and they want a data transfer with that, you can say, cool, that's going to be 30 or 40 pound setup cost to copy over your data and stuff like that. You know, there's a little bit, there's, you can, you can nickel and dime little extras here and there. So sometimes just the face value of the computer is not the only money you'll make on it. But yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, um, you get more without local competition in smaller areas. That is also true. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I'll see how it goes. You know, yeah, I might put it out of 1400 and if someone goes, would you take 1350 for it? I'll be like, oh, okay then, kind of thing. So yeah. But yeah, we've got to be realistic. That much being said, Christmas is approaching. But a lot of parents, when you tell them that a gaming rig is over a grand, they go, oh, you know. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, and yeah, foot in the door for more paid work. That's the other thing as well. I try to be, it's like when I'm selling, when I'm selling cables, um, I sell cables and phone chargers and stuff like that at barely cost price. You know, like if I buy a really nice braided USB charge cable, I'll often pay like seven pounds for it and sell it for 10 pounds. Three quid, that's lunch money, man. I don't care about three pounds. However, the customer has walked out the door going, this is a shop that had what I needed and they'll be back when they need help. Whereas if you come in and you're selling cables at 15 pounds, 20 pounds, They'll go, they're going to go, oh, that shop on the high street, really expensive. So sometimes a little lost leader here and there, like you say, foot in the door for more work. So, right, let's get this out of the way. Let's build up the other one. But yeah, one of the reasons why... One of the reasons why I originally didn't build these up with the 5800X and a water cooler in it is that, like that water cooler, another hundred pounds straight away, just immediately another hundred pounds onto the price. So AIOs, they're not your friend when you're building computers to flip, unless you're really going for a boutique PC per se. So yeah, given the 12 month service option, maybe I don't like obligations though. If you know, like. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll warranty it because I'm legally obligated to. But you don't want a service obligation because that can come back to bite you. One of the reasons why when I, when I went solo, when I went into business, I had just come out of a job where I was doing service contracts for small businesses. So um, uh, my boss had service contracts with small businesses and when they had a problem with their computer, when they had a problem with one of the office computers, they call him up and they say, the office, the secretary's computer has fallen over. He calls me up, I drive out there and I fix it and then I come home again and I bill him for my time. That was what I used to do before I had a computer shop. Um, but the problem with that is, is that he has a service contract. So those small businesses are paying him, I don't know, uh, X hundred pounds a month for that. You know, who knows how much? I don't I, I don't know the details. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Well, no, actually, I, I legitimately don't know how much those contracts costed because I was just a technician. However, the problem is, is that they had that and then they had X number of call outs available and they'd call up, you know, they'd call you on a Sunday afternoon if they had your mobile and they'd be like, oh, the computer's down. I'm like, it's Sunday. Get off the phone, you know, and you, you'd get, you'd have an email from them or a missed call. Like I had one company where 
I'd have a call or a message from them every other day. And every time you'd see their name pop up on my mobile phone, I'd be like, what now? You know, so the problem with service contracts is you have to start specifying how many times they're allowed to call you up and stuff like that. And, you know, it's like you have to start getting into the nitty gritty of um, uh, of how many call outs per year or per month they actually have. And uh, you get into the weeds, man. You get into the weeds. And if you're not careful, I mean, there are some customers who will never call you, but you might just end up with a customer that is in the shop every week with something wrong with the computer. And you're on the hook for fixing it every time. So yeah, don't know. That's just my thoughts. It's a good idea. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not slating it, but I'm very, very wary of these things. Uh, little Timmy shoved up a fork in the hole. It smoked. Oh yeah, exactly that, man. Rural Dorset is loaded. Ah, uh, it depends. Around here, we've got a mixture of people. You've got farmers. Um, uh, or, you know, just people who don't have any money because they're in rural Dorset. And you've got what I call the DFLers, the down from Londoners, who've got a weekend house down here. And they come down from London every weekend and they start arguing with you over your £50 flat service fee. And you're like, if you got this done in London, they charge you £100 before they knew what brand it was. So stop arguing at my £50 flat fee. But now I'm ranting. I'm not going to lie, I profile people. If you pull up in front of my shop in a Range Rover, I will charge you more. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't pull up in front of my shop in a Range Rover, pro tip. Uh, let's put a motherboard in this. Uh, where's the... here it is. Uh, I should probably fit the cooler to this first because it's an air cooler. I'm going to do that. Uh, white Range Rover adds 300 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, you have your head. You have your. You, 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 you have cut your head off. Have I? What the hell happened? Don't be tricked into thinking farmers aren't loaded. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I'm. I'm not going to make assumptions. However, um, not everyone around here is loaded. That's that's the that's the point. You've also, of course, got to consider what other people are selling at. Um, and while I say I don't have much competition around here, but I do have some competition around here. So you have to remain competitive. There's always, um, like in terms of repair costs, you know, there's always someone in the local, there's always someone in the local business directory who's doing it for £30 call out or something like that. And someone's going to be like, oh, well, so-and-so will do it for 30 And like, well, bloody call him then, you know. But on the flip side, of course, if you do that with everyone, then you just end up with no work. So it's a, it's a balancing act. Um, but I don't know. It's tough because there are some people who you're like, you can afford this. But there are also some people where, you know, you get just someone who's come in. They've got a minor issue and you don't want to sting them for 50 quid or more just because they needed to turn their computer off and on again kind of thing. It's very difficult to judge how much to charge people. It's a very, very difficult game to play. There's my thermal paste. So yeah. Uh, let's see. What would you charge if I rolled up on a, a... What the heck is a bicycle Z? Or a bicycle Z? I don't even know what that is. Is that an e-bike or something? Alright, hang on a sec. I'm going to put my thermal paste on this wrong. <laughs> That'll do. Tell me I'm wrong in the comments, I dare you. Do I charge a whole tax? What the heck is a whole tax? Uh, I'm not VAT registered though, so there's no VAT on my prices. So you can't claim your VAT back from me, which is a, a disadvantage. However, there's no benefit to me being VAT registered. <laughs> See, big fingers on the keyboard. Fair enough. If you rock up on a bicycle, then... Um, I don't know, man. Is it like, is it like a, uh, um, uh, what's the, is it like a rally bike 
or is it like a Marin? You know, what brand? <laughs> That's the. These are the big questions. These are the big questions. Uh, MX4, yep, MX4 thermal paste. And no, I'm not going to spread it because when I screw this thing down, it's going to go everywhere. It'll be fine. Uh, the MX5 spread application is a dream. I'm still, I'm still using up my MX4 stock. However, I think I've only got one more tube of the MX4 left, and then I shall probably switch over to MX5. Yeah. Oh, asshole tax. You know, it's funny you should say that, Bill. It's funny you should say that. I don't, tr I don't have an asshole tax, but I was. Where is it? Hang on a minute. You guys are gonna love this. Get ready for some cringe. I hope you guys came here for cringe, because I got cringe. Look at this, this came in today. This is a MacBook. Look at the fucking state of this, man. I don't know how well that's coming out on camera. This is filthy. It's biohazard filthy. Look at the state of this. Like, come on, man. I gotta clean this up. Do you charge extra for that, man? Like, what do you, what do you, yeah, just, uh, uh. The annoying thing is, the, the customer came in without a mask, so, because they came in without a mask, I was like, yeah, cool, can you stand over there next to the door, please, you know? And, uh, and they sort of put it on the side, and I booked it in. And it wasn't until after they left, I went over to pick it up, I was like, oh, come on, man. Just, oh, oh. Um, yeah. However, I recorded a, uh, a YouTube short with my mobile telephone. Uh, and basically, I'm going to start uploading videos on here on the second channel uh, of me cleaning up laptops. So if I've got to suffer to clean this rubbish, at least I'm actually going to at least I'm actually going to get some <laughs> ad revenue out of that. I'm sure I can make good money on YouTube by just doing clean videos where there's no commentary, it's just me cleaning a laptop and people can be like, mmm, when they see it come clean. So yeah, <laughs> you threw up on your keyboard, you got any for sale? Not that you'd want to buy. I bought cheap keyboards and they're bad, man. They're terrible. I regret everything. I should have sent them back. Caradog was just like, man, send those back, they're crap. And I should have done that, but I didn't. Uh, right, let's get this boy on. Eh. Whoop. In before someone in the comments is just like, you should put that on the box. Yeah, well, I didn't. That fan needs to be a little bit higher. Eh. I'm slightly sad that I bought the red coloured version of this because it matched the old it matched the uh, the other corsair build like a dream which is a black and red build however this is a, a black and white build and i'm set that's just not quite in the hole properly and i need to fiddle it by hand there we go Whoop. that is on let's plug that in a uh, cpu fan Oh my word, there we go. I did it. Right. Whoop. Ram, we need some Ram. You're looking at a PC specialist build and they charge nine quid for MX4. What, like just as an optional extra? Like nine pounds just for them to use MX4 when they're building it. What the heck, man? I'm not charging enough, you guys are right. I'm not charging enough. Uh, when you wanted to buy a 3950X PC Specialist were the only ones with it in stock, so you had to buy it from the minimum spec. Yeah. I had to send it back. They replaced it under warranty and didn't use MX4 again. Yeah. That's uh, that's annoying, man. Do I, repair, do I repair TVs? Not really, just because I don't have enough experience to do board repair on TVs and I can't find parts for them is the short answer there. So yeah, a dollar for one application of M MX4. Yeah, I mean, 
I would rather provide a premium service because like one of the other reasons why I should charge more for these PCs as well is like when people come in here and they say, I want to buy a laptop, I want to buy a PC, it's quite common for someone to say, you know, what are your prices like? They're basically trying to say in the nicest possible way, are you expensive kind of thing? And that's a reasonable thing to ask, you know. And what I usually and the the tagline I the tagline I give is I don't sell cheap computers I sell good computers, and that's the thing. Sure, if you buy a computer from me, it might cost you a bit more than if you get it from PC Specialist or somewhere like that. But it's going to have a decent case. It's going to have a decent CPU. I'm going to have picked the parts out carefully. It's been built myself with someone who actually cares. And you can come in here anytime and ask questions about it, get support for it, all the rest of it. That's what you're paying for. And I've got to actually place a value on that service because that's what you can't buy online. And that's the thing about running a, high, uh, a brick and mortar shop. You don't compete with the internet for the cost of parts and stuff like that. You have to compete with a service that you can't buy online and you can't buy customer service online. That's the thing. You need to look at their pricing before you say you cost more. This is true. Yeah. All right. I need some RAM. I've got a horrible feeling I don't have any. What's this? Uh, okay. Right. Literally, the only RAM kit I've got on hand right now is this 8 gigabyte 3000 kit. Um, this isn't the RAM that's going to stay in the PC. I won't sell it with this kit. I'll get a 16 gig kit um, of like 34 or 3600 or probably 32 or 3400. Um, so this kit won't stay in here because this is an 8 gigabyte kit. But I'm going to fit it for now just so we can actually turn it on and see it post. So yeah, I'm going to put this in but this isn't, this isn't the stuff that will stay in there. Looks like the cooler is out of the way of the RAM slots. Uh, that's perspective. There's a better perspective for you. So as you can see, when I hold it up like that, suddenly it makes sense. But uh, that's perspective of the camera. Whoop. Let's do that. Whoop. Do I have regulars? Uh, yeah, I do have regulars. There are people who will come to my shop every time there's something wrong with their computer. Sometimes I see them often if they've got multiple computers. Sometimes you see someone every every six months, every year. Sometimes you see one, someone every year. They come in and they say, hey, you know, you, you always take good care of my computer. I brought it in for a service. Can you just give it a clean up, please? I don't bank on it. I don't bank on it, though. I often say to people, you know, people often say um, when they're picking up their computers, they're like, thank you very much. I hope not to see you too soon. And I say, yes, like the dentist, really. Thank you for fixing me up. However, I would like not to have to return not too soon. So, <laughs> so yeah, as a big fan. Uh, 120 mil. Um, so yeah, um, it's a dinky, it's a dinky one though. Uh, that's um, an Arctic, um, uh, this is an Arctic static pressure fan. So it's pretty decent for its size and price. So yeah, right. Uh, do they still sell 4 gig kits? They almost certainly do. I can't remember where this kit came from. I didn't purchase this kit. Um, I think I got it. It came in some build that I bought or something like that. I bought something and it had a RAM kit in it and it was this 8 gigabyte kit, which is a bit of an ungift really because no one wants 8 gigs. Uh, let's put this down here for a sec. Enjoy the bottom of the case. It's an Arctic Bionics 140. Is it really a 140? I'm going to measure that citation needed. Where's my hacking calipers? There they are. I'll be the judge of that. Ah. 120. Checkmate. Chris S. confirmed for being a fraud. Nice try, though. Right. Bam. Let's get this guy fitted up. 
I'm going to do the peel now before it gets hidden under a fan. Oop. Citation needed. There's a Tom Scott reference. It wasn't directly a Tom Scott reference. I just say citation needed in general for when something needs to be confirmed. However, I do rec I I do uh, I do watch Tom Scott. I like me a bit of Tom Scott. I feel like he's a YouTuber doing things right. Uh, tweezers. That Mac is minging. You charge 20 quid to clean that? Yeah. The pro See, this is the thing. It's gotten me to thinking, should I charge a dirty computer tax where I say to someone, look, we have to clean this before we can fix it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to fix this while it's in this state. It's gross. It's actually a biohazard. Um, and you say, you know, if you're going to charge for that, you've got to say, this is going to cost you £10, £20. You know, this will cost you extra for us to clean it. But the problem is you run the risk that the client will turn around and be like, well, in that case, I'll take it myself. And either A, they'll go somewhere else who doesn't insult them by telling them their computer is filthy, which isn't to say whether you're justified or not, but they're going to get offended when you tell them it's filthy. Um, so either A, you lose the business, or B, they might try and clean it themselves and make the problem even worse. And then you have a liquid damaged computer that you might not be able to repair. And they'll say, well, you said it was dirty, so I tried to clean it. So, and I'm not saying that's how it's going to go down, but that's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about. I don't know. So, yeah, that's kind of my concern. So at the moment, I haven't, I haven't decided that I'm going to charge a cleaning fee. But I'm very tempted to. I'm going to go and get some screws. Doo -doo -doo. Have the motherboard screws to this on hand. I'm going to move the microphone slightly. So I can see the screen better. There we go. Let's see. Give it back dirty. Ugh. It's terrible, man. Let's see. Uh, you got a friend with 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gig hard drive, a GT730. He doesn't want your 16 gigs of RAM, 120 gig SSD, or a 750 Ti, even for free or swap, until it starts to be unusable. I'm surprised he considers that build usable. But sometimes some people have some people have never used a fast computer, so they just don't know what fast looks like. And they'll use something and be like, yeah, this is fine. And I'm like, you haven't used a fast computer. You don't know what fast looks like. But if it works for them, then sure. You know, it's it's really easy to it's really easy to dunk on people with um, with low spec computers. But it doesn't actually achieve anything. And like, I've had this discussion, you know, I've, I've had this argument with people who've been like, oh, I'm installing Windows 10 on this old computer. And I'm like, why would you do that? That's terrible. Throw it out. And they're like, oh, it's fine. And I'm just like, I'll be the judge of that. However, if it works for them, then sure, why not? And that's the thing is that if, you, if you're if you an asshole about it, then it doesn't actually achieve anything except making you look like a dick. So, however, if you're offering them a free upgrade that they're not taking, then that's kind of dumb, really. So yeah, certainly if you're offering it as a free upgrade, that's kind of a different matter to if you were saying if you were trying to upsell them stuff. Ten or fifteen pound cleaning fee is fair enough if it's rank. Yeah. I'm tempted to do a ten pound cleaning fee. But I'm also tempted just to bury that in the cost of the repair. Like that MacBook that I just showed off, you know, I think it needs a new battery. 
and you know like I may just charge a little bit extra for the labor right I should just be able to plug all of this stuff in because the cable the, the case has already been plumbed up should be a quick and easy build let's see right the power LED I'm gonna do my customary plug it into the hard drive LED uh, wow, you guys can't see anything of what I'm doing, but you never can when you're plugging in the the noodly boys. We're probably out of focus now as well, because I just went in too close. And even though I've just moved the camera in for this close-up shot, all you guys can probably see is my big old sausage fingers. Reset. power so because Corsair cases don't have a hard drive LED I plug the power LED into the hard drive LED slot instead so that way the power LED will flash on hard drive activity and because this thing has got RGB fans in it it's not like you don't know that it's turned on so yeah focus is still good hooray all right, you also bury things like that in the cost. Yeah, last Mankey PC you've got, you basically got a free 964 gig. Yeah, <laughs> you'd spilled curry on it. Oh, God. Just, <sighs> it baffles me. It's like with that laptop, you know, someone is using that laptop as a daily driver. They're using that and they're typing on that every day and not seeing that as a problem. And I'm like, Ew. Gross. You know, it's just like that. It's just, it's like eating a sandwich with hands that you've just scraped through mud. And yet you don't have, you know, you'd have an issue with that. But typing on a keyboard that's literally covered in muck, you don't have an issue with. Like, what, uh, like, is it still on the shelf? Yeah, this, this heck in MacBook Air, man. I've probably ranted about this one before on stream. Here's another cracking example, because we, you've got me going now, everyone. Here's another one. MacBook Air. You can see the muck on that. But look at this. The camera doesn't do it justice. The camera does not do it justice. It's filthy. It's gross. It's horrid. It's a travesty. When this came in, I said to the customer, I said to the customer, that's filthy. You can't treat it like that it'll break you know you you just the, you, this this is a macbook air it's one of the cheaper macbooks however like this was 800 pounds when it was new that that other macbook was a grand when it was new probably 1100 actually and it's like these 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 things are nearly a four figure sum of money and this is how you treat them and the customer said to me she said i live in a house with dogs you know that's that's how it is and I'm just like, what, your dinner plates look like that? Come on, just wash your hands. Good grief, what's wrong with you? You know, man, it, oh, it frustrates me. It frustrates me. And I, I don't like bitching about my clients. I don't like bitching about my customers. That's not, that, that's not professional. And I don't like doing that. But there are some people which just confuse me, man. That's, that's what I'm ranting about, really. It's not that I'm bitching about my clients. But I'm confused. They confuse me. Let's plug in these USB connectors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was from a woman. But that's that's um, certainly one of the, the DFLers. For certain. That MacBook has been sitting on that shelf for too long. I need to call her up and say, come and get her. I'm throwing it in the bin. It's dead. And she keeps saying, oh, I'm going to come and pick it up. I found someone else who's going to look at it. And I'm like, good luck. It's not worth fixing. And she keeps saying, I'm going to come and get it. And then she doesn't. And I need to actually call her up and say, if you don't come and get it in the next two weeks, I'm going to throw it in the bin. And then she'll come and get it. Ugh. Never blame the doggy. Yeah, for reals. <laughs> it's professional as long as you don't identify the customer. Yeah, let's go with that. And if that customer is watching and just happened to recognize their MacBook Air, then, well, yeah. 
<laughs> What's up, Treb, by the way? Hello. Uh, I should get a UV torch to inspect machines. Oh, I'm scared. I, I, that's a good idea because um, uh, the, um, the chap who sent me a care package full of cool stuff, he actually sent me a UV torch to use with the... Um, with the uh, um, the coating, conformal coating that he sent me. However, the UV torch was busted, and I had to chuck it out. But I retained the I retained the bulb from it. But I'm going to get a UV torch, so we could do funny things with that. I want to buy an obnoxiously big and bulky one, though, for no reason whatsoever. That just I can have a disco in my shop. So yeah, let them know you charge a storage fee. Yeah, I need to start doing that for reals. Don't bin it, part it out for spares. Uh, I probably will, but there's nothing in it that's worth doing. The The logic board is is a disaster, and the screen has a dead backlight in it. So apart from, apart from the SSD, there's basically nothing worth having from it. I guess you could clean up the chassis and reuse that, but that's a long shot. So yeah, use a UV torch and an invisible security marker for marking... GPUs. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Get a UVC lamp to actually disinfect them. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Resistors and caps, parts board. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. Oh no, a cockroach came out. Oh no. Uh, the worst I've had to deal with is the mites laptop. The one that had uh, mites in it. But I knew that in advance. The customer brought it in because the laptop was infested with mites. And they were like, I don't know what to do. It's in, you know, the, the, the thing is infested because the house is infested. I've had the house cleaned out, but I don't know how to get them out of the laptop. And I was okay with that because they were up front with me. They were like, you know, look, this thing's infested. Can you de-infest it for me? And I did. I drowned everything in alcohol was the solution to that. Right. The, this fan header needs to go somewhere. There's no fan header here. It needs to go to anywhere else. I'm going to have to open the back and reroute it to the top left, I think. Let's do that. Luckily, this has been a fairly quick build. We're nearly, we're nearly done. Ugh. Alcohol dip, yeah. Whoop. Drowning in alcohol is the solution to everything. <laughs> Mood. Big mood. Oh. I do like this case in white. It's grown on me. Ugh. The back is a bit spaghetti, but there's no points for cleaning this up. So... Oh, we can make that a little bit better. Let's just unplug this a sec. Really? Is that what I did with it? Oh, I think that's Caradog's handiwork. Yeah, that's Caradog's handiwork. I'm going to blame him. Caradog does not build for looks. He builds for function. Uh, come on. Get you connected up. Oh, man, this is going to be a pain to connect up. Ooh. Yeah, he's not here. <laughs> we can blame everything on Caradog because he's not here. You're an all-black, no RGB kind of guy. That's legit. I, um, um, I like my RGB. I'm a big fan of RGB. However, I can respect that it's not everyone's cup of tea. And, you know, the, the Batman look is also good. Oh, I shouldn't have plugged in the EPS connector. Right. This is one of the worst places in the case to have to plug stuff in. Come on. I can't show people this. Go in so I can move on. Oh my god, this is this is nightmarish. There we go, it's in. It's in. Ah, the face when you can't get it in. Oh, you're all about the unicorn vomit. Yeah, good for you, Zoe. Ah, right, let's see. You should treat it how Lewis Rossman does. Have them sign a contract where if they don't collect it after a certain period, it comes to your property. Yeah. Um, 
It's legal if you've got an agreement for it. So yes, that is what I need to be doing. I agree with that. Um, so yeah, at the very least, once it's been there for a while, you can take ownership. Because uh, by the standard law of the land in the UK is called goods left in trust. When someone leaves their laptop with me, it's goods left in trust. They have left their property with me trusting that I will take reasonable care of it. Uh, and I'm then legally responsible for it until... Uh, and I'm legally responsible for it for six months and the assumption that I have made reasonable effort to return the property. If I have made reasonable effort to return the property and six months have passed, at that point I may take possession of it. Now, I, ha I never actually invoke that law, but that is actually the, the law of the land. Uh, I've never been in court uh, versus a customer. However, if a customer took me to court for such a thing, that would be the law of the land that we would be arguing. So, yeah. Ugh. You're all about the S71 Blackbird stealth. Z71 even. Yeah. Right, what's that? That's RGB. I'm just going to straighten out these fan wires and rejiggle them. Whoop. You need proof. You need proof. Yeah. Proof that you made effort, yeah. Phone logs will do the job, yeah. I also take... Uh, um, the other method is... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Phone logs, I think, is the best method. It is astonishing how people leave stuff with you, though. Like, I've got laptops in here. They're working laptops. They're done, they're fixed. And they're decent laptops as well. And customers will leave them with you for months. I've had laptops that have sat in the shop for years. And, you know, you call the customer up and you're like, are you going to come and get this? It's a laptop. You, you know, it costs money. You paid good money for this. Come and get it. Why do you not want it? You don't want it, I'll have it, you know. Right. What's going on with that? This is RGB. That's RGB. Can we gather all these up? Yeah. All right, hold up. Some tactical zip ties. I'm not going to do like cable porn on this. I'm just trying to make these not awful. Uh, the snips. EVGA is making AMD motherboards now as well. Yeah. They're very cool, EVGA motherboards. They're kind of designed for extreme overclockers and stuff, but I would love to have one for pimp value because they just look amazing. You know, that 90 degree rotation though. It looks super cool. Let's see. I think we can make that work. I'm just going to bundle this and cable tie it. Uh, not proud of this. It's functional though. Damn it. Oh, come on. When I'm doing a build video, I can fumble with a wire and then I can just jump cut to the point where the wire actually goes on. <laughs> there we go. Eh. Right. So, we've got fan... Fan. That needed to be in that bundle. Okay, that's going back behind there now. That lives there. Tuck you behind the motherboard. No one will know! Okay, right. Where is my third fan? 
I've lost a fan somewhere in the midst. One, two. No, no, seriously, where's the third fan gone? Am I blind? That's this one. There it is. Heckin' comedy act, man. Clown fiesta. There we go. Right. This is kind of loose, but that's also okay. I might just put one more zip tie up there just to bind that up the top of the case. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave that loose just so when I put the side panel on, it will press flat. Yeah, that's fine as it is. It ain't going to fall out. That's the important thing. Uh, granny not look. Yeah. Um, let's see. You're still sad that Intel stopped making motherboards. This is true. Do they not? Do, do Intel still make server stuff? I'm surprised. I'd be surprised if they dropped their server market. Oh, there we go. Is that on properly? I don't think it is. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. There we go. Smooth lines. Uh, is it real that Squid Game is banned in the UK? No idea. Oh, it's a 15 age rated show here. Fair enough. I haven't watched any of Squid Game. Everyone's raving about it, but I don't watch TV shows. So, yeah, I might watch it at some point. But, yeah. The problem is when I'm bored, I, you know, I when I'm bored and I want to watch t shows, I watch YouTube. I'm just more interested in that kind of content these days, I guess. So, yeah. It's not that good. Yeah. I have suspicion it's probably overrated at this point, which is not to say that it's bad, but it's so hyped up that it could not possibly live up to the expectations. I'm sad about that red fan. I may legitimately swap out that red fan for a black one. Oh, hold up a sec. Because that red fan is kind of just there now. It's a remake of Battle Royale. Ah, uh, fair enough. There we go. How do we feel about that fan? Have I got any decent 120mm fans that I could change that out with just so there's not just a splash of red in a sea of black and white? Oh, let's plug that in. Just watch anime. That's that's true. That is the answer, I feel. Back up a bit. There we go. You vote for a fan swap. Yeah. That's the problem. I bought this cooler to go in the other case, which has a red and black theme in it, and it doesn't look right in here. Mobo has red f buttons on it. Not quite. Oh, speaking of which, didn't plug in the front panel audio. I mean, I could cheat and set the RGB to red. What the heck? Oh, the connector's upside down. Hold on while I fumble. Not very exciting watching someone fumble with something I know. There we go. That'll do. Uh, right, let's see if it boots up while we while I go and rummage around in my in my fannery. Um, 
How much do you want to bet that this motherboard's going to need a BIOS update? Oh, B550 works with Ryzen 5000 off the bat, doesn't it? So I shouldn't need a BIOS update. Here we go. Is it getting cold in the shop yet? A little bit. It's a little bit chilly. I'm putting on an extra layer and that's getting me by. I'm trying to get to December without putting the heating on. That's my mission. So yeah. <laughs> you think the fan has a spot of colour? Yeah. Maybe. Draws the centre of attention perhaps? All of my fans are 140 mil. The only 120 I've got is this, uh, the, the, yeah. The only 120 mil fan that I've got that's a four pin is this NZXT one. But it's an airflow fan. Oh, also that's not gonna work because it's got these rubber nubs on it. It wouldn't fit anyway, I don't think. No, not feeling that. It'll have to stay put for now. Yeah, I might change that out, but for now, I might cheat and just set the RGB to red. It's not a 4-pin fan. It was, uh, the NZXT is. This one is as well. Um, these case fans are 3-pin, but that's okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, B550 does unless it's the B550A. Yeah, which is secretly a B450. Right. Uh, life's pretty, but why would it... There's... Um, Rainbow Puke can be done right. Um, Rainbow Puke can look really pretty when it's done right. Um, but you have to actually set up for it. So yeah, Micro Man was a good film. It was. It perhaps wasn't the best um, recommendation to honour uh, Sir Clive Sinclair, because um, he's kind of the villain in Micro Man. Um, however, it's still a good film. Uh, it, it tells you more about what Sinclair was up to back in, uh, back in the heydays. So yeah. White version of the same fan would look top notch. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to buy another one of these though, and I don't really want to do that. I mean, I could. I think what I'll do, I'll hold out for a half-decent 120mm fan to swap that out with. I'm sure I'll find one somewhere. That's what I'm actually going to do, I think. Right, have we got a capture? Cat link. Uh... No. Bloody Corsair. I'll put it into the cheat capture card. Right, uh, let's go to that one. Right, let's quickly configure this thing. 1920 by 1080. Are you gonna work? Uh, heck, defaults. USB video, activate. I'm going to restart the computer just to see if that picks up now. Uh, man, the Ava Media Live Gamers let's switch to um, something where there's a face cam. Uh, the Ava Media Live Gamers are really good capture cards, but they hate AMD graphics cards. They hate AMD graphics cards because they've got HDCP. 
and the Ava Media doesn't handle HDCP properly. And the heckin' capture isn't working. Has it actually booted? You know, it's hard to tell. Oh, that's the wrong keyboard. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Put another shilling in the meter. Oh, no. Where's the thing? Here it is. Trying to tell if this thing is posted or not. I'm not sure it has, you know. It's entirely possible that we just have no post. Uh, right, hang on a sec. There's another way of solving this. I'm just going to plug it into the heckin... Um, let's go into here and see what we get. Uh, let's see, live gamer. No signal. All right, that's good enough. Right, no signal. Let's hit the reset button. Does this this motherboard has no diagnostic lights on it? That's a big sad. Like diagnostic lights would immediately tell me if this thing is posting or not. It looks like we have no post. You had to sell both your Ava Medias. Uh, yeah, the problem is every every capture card I've had has had pros and cons. It's very frustrating. You'd hate to know that the 3080 Ti doesn't stay at 144 in games you play. Really? Ugh. Okay, this thing ain't posting. Right. Um... Right, we're not getting any hints because we don't have any diagnostic LEDs. Uh, let's start with a beep speaker and see if that tells me anything. Otherwise, I'll try plugging in my um, I'll try plugging in my postcard. Let's change out to bench cam and let's add in a capture video capture live game up and we'll put you down there. All right, speaker. Reset. See if we get any beeps. I'm a moron. What's wrong with this picture, folks? I'll shine a light in there and I'll give you all 30 seconds to figure it out. Yeah, there you go. You guys have seen it. Not worth the amount of time I spent adjusting that light, but... I unplugged the CPU power to plug in the case fans. Pro tip, get power to your CPU. It helps. Now I've got to adjust this heckin' light again. Extreme amount of faff. All right, let's try that again. All right, take two. Power on. And beep. Beep. I'll try out the. Oh, yeah. I'll stick one in in a moment.
Nope, there it goes. Yeah, it lives. Boss has been reset. Yeah, there we go. Hunky dory. Good. Right, I'm not going to do any serious configuration in here because we're running low on time. I'm not going to bother turning on XMP because it's an 8 gigabyte kit and it's not staying in there. However, it works. It dies, it lives, it dies again. Get carrot log back ASAP. No! Right. Uh, on the topic of power troubleshooting, drop, bought a 2600X locally. Uh, would not work with 4-pin power, but it would turn on with 8-pin power. Yeah. Um, ooh. I'm surprised. I would have thought it would work with a 4-pin power, but yeah, sometimes you do need the all 8 pins connected. So yeah, it's luck of the draw, to be honest. Hmm. All right. Okay, this thing is uh, alive and well. I'm going to close up the case and we'll wrap up. Oh, yeah, we'll we'll stick the 90 degree connector in there. Right, turn off. Change cameras. Uh. Right, get rid of you. Take that out, and I'll oh, see. The problem is this is all being cable tidied into place now. Can I push that back a little bit? Not quite. I don't think this is the best example for it. Well, it would work actually. We might. It might work. Hold up. I'll be looking for the speaker next week. Probably. Probably. One of the things I miss about the old shop is having the, the circuit boards behind me. Because I used to plug all of the spare speakers and stuff like that into those circuit boards. So whenever I needed something, it was always just sticking out one of the boards behind me. Yeah, I think you might be right, Chris, but we'll find out. We'll put it to the test. I think I think these connectors, as cool as they are, I think they're going to be incredibly circumstantial. Another thing I need to check is whether we can actually use it this way around, because the 24-pin connector can be either way up. Uh, where are they? There it is. Let's see if we can actually use it on this build, on this motherboard. Oh, we can. So that would go on like that. Oh, that's going to be hideous to remove. It's a look. I'd have to come out of... Oh, blimey, I'll, I'll set, I've wandered off shot. Bring back the wall of motherboards. Uh, I, I want to in the future. I do want to bring back the wall of motherboards in the future. It is part of the original plan. What I want to do is I want to remount all the motherboards on like a frame or something so I can hang it in the middle of the of the soundproofing or something. That's the plan. Um, so yeah, I do, I, I do want to do something with that. I just haven't figured out when and how yet. Uh. Right, let's push that right back. Hmm. This is going to be a very high strain turn there. No, I don't think it'll fit this case. This um uh this particular cable doesn't want to make that bend. So it would go in like that. Um, but it's not going to work out in this case. The cable doesn't want to make that bend, and it doesn't actually benefit me. So, 
I, I'd have to get the cable out from that hole there for that to work. And that will be, I'll, I, I'd have to start removing fans and everything. So this specific case and motherboard combination, that's a no from me. However, there are, there are other times where it would work. <laughs> hey, thanks for the support, guys. <laughs> So yeah, not to, not on this one. However, other builds, I will certainly keep these on hand because like I, I said earlier on at the start of the stream, having a selection of connectors on hand is very helpful. However, I don't think they're useful on these particular ones. Likewise, um, um, for these AMD graphics cards, the uh, for these AMD graphics cards, the eight pin, ones won't work either because um, uh, on some graphics cards um, the connector is at the top so that connector is the quote-unquote right way up oh no that does work for this one I lie so that would go in like that and then the idea is you bring in your cable just straight across the back like this so that could work actually. So you bring this all around so it comes out there and you just go whoosh, straight into there. And that's a look. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. Oh, I've gotta reroute this whole cable. Ah, uh, if I didn't have to replumb the case, to, I would actually try that out. Because that's kind of interesting. Um, because, yeah, you'd basically just have the cable run just straight up the back of the uh, board like that. Um, and uh, whereas for now, I've already routed this cable just so we've got a nice loop straight into the graphics card. So if I hadn't already built it up this way, I would try that out, but not on this build. So, as I say, I think these connectors can be useful, but they're a bit circumstantial. So I've got to wait for a... I've got to wait for a build that's a bit more suited for them. Worth a try, though. Oops. I'm going to keep those on hand, and I'm sure I'm going to find a use for them at some point. It's an adapter that's purely been designed to encourage OCD. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, let's get this side panel on. Does this side panel have a front and back? I don't think it does. Nope. This side panel has uh, no border on it, so it doesn't have a front or a back. Well, it needs a good clean, though. More points of failure, potentially. Uh, what do I do for the two AIO fans that I didn't use? I will probably keep them as spares. Um, I might include them with the computer. But I'll probably keep them as spares, to be honest. Um, is my inclination. Because I've included extra fans in that build anyway. The RGB fans are not standard with the case. So it has extra fans in it. And by retaining some fans, by retaining some spares and parts for myself, it means that the next build I'm doing where I'm like, I need an, an extra fan in there, or, you know, this, this could do with some extra case fans, I've got some extra ones that I can lob in there for minimal cost kind of thing. Still not a fan of the red fan. Yeah, that red fan will get changed. I don't like it either. I will change that red fan for something else because it is just there. Um, and it's frustrating because it, it, it looks fantastic in the other build, but it doesn't work in this one. So, yeah. I'll find another 120mm fan. I might even keep an eye out, see if I can score another one of these RGB fans on the cheap. Um, because this case does have a six channel RGB controller. So I could wire up an extra uh, Corsair RGB fan to that, um, to that cooler and have it on the same RGB lighting. There we go. A loop. Let's wrap up. I mentioned a while back that I'm not VAT registered. How do you stay below the VAT thre threshold? Um, well, the VAT threshold is like, what, 70, 77 grand? 75, 77, something like that. Um, and uh, I just don't make that much money. My revenue isn't that high. I'm a, I'm a fairly small operation. 
and yeah, uh, I mean that much being said, I'm probably getting I'm probably getting reasonably up there uh, with the um, uh, with I'm probably getting reasonably high with the expansion that I've done uh, in the past year. Um, however, uh, yeah, my operation is not that big basically. And um, because most of my most of my profit, oh, rear panel, because most of my profit is in service charges rather than uh, parts, I would actually lose money being back registered because I'd have to give twenty percent of my uh, of my labour fee to the VAT man, and that would mean that I would have to either lose twenty percent of my revenue. Or I'd have to increase my prices by 20%, which would kind of suck, really. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to avoid being that registered for as long as possible for that exact reason. I should franchise. Nah. Let's see. Uh, the SP120s ain't good airflow. They're fine. Like, you can run up numbers and stuff like that. However... Airflow is overrated. As long as you have some airflow, that is what is important. So yeah. Do I plan to do a PC build with a full tower case? They're not my cup of tea, in all honesty. I never know what to fill the space with. Um, so yeah. Um, it's You always end up with a lot of empty space, unless you do like custom water cooling loops and stuff like that. So um, uh, I'm genuinely not sure what the appeal is of full towers. Um, because I just don't understand what you fill them with. You'd have to put in, um, like in the old days, of course, you could have in a whole bunch of uh, DVD drives and stuff like that. There was a point to it. But, uh, you know, gaming PCs, especially these days, are so simple because, like, we don't even have any drives in this. There's just an M.2 SSD on the motherboard, and that's it. If you need more storage, just stick another one down the bottom. So, <laughs> I came from an NZXT, so Airflow is new to you. Look. I've got a torrent now. I know all about airflow. I have the airflow case now. I'll have you know. So there. You still want a good looking three slot micro ATX case. Yeah. Micro ATX is... The problem is, is that the vast majority of micro ATX cases are about that tall. And for another inch, you can have a 220T that is full ATX. Um, so it's... Micro ATX is a really hard sell these days, in my opinion. Uh, and if you want to go small, you ha you may as well go ITX and do it properly, if you see what I mean. So, yeah. I know all about the airflow. Not that I'll show us because I'll never edit the video. We'll see. We'll see. Um, square PC cases I'm not a fan of. Um, I don't think they're space efficient, personally, desk-wise. Um, I'd rather have a tall, narrow tower. So, yeah. I download my airflow. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. MATX boards are like half the price of ITX. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, micro ATX does reduce cost. I'll give you that. The problem with a lot of micro ATX cases, though, is, um, yeah, it's uh, graphics card placement and stuff like that. It can be done. It's just not my first choice. It's just not my first choice. Right, uh, this thing is done. Um, I think we're finished here. Um, so I've got to I've got to spec up the price on this one at some point as well, but that can wait for now. We have been going for coming up to three hours, so I'm going to wrap it up um, and uh, call it a day because we've made good time today. What do I think of the Fantex P500A? I quite like the P500A. I did a build with it um, around. Um, uh, uh, I did I did a build with it about a year ago, um, last Christmas, uh, and I really liked it. It was like the last build video I did in the old shop, um, and yeah, I, I really liked the P500. It was a very manageable case. Uh, let's see. What are the specs on this PC? What's new and used? This is, so this is now a, uh, a 5600X with a B550 motherboard and a 6600 XT, um, and everything in here is new. Um, yeah, this is all brand, this is all new stuff. Like, I mean, obviously this case has been sitting in the shop for a couple of months, but it's, um, but it's essentially new. 
It's never it's never had any life other than sitting out in the shop on show. So yeah. Um, so um, okay, let, yeah. Uh, I th well to spec this one up. This would come in at probably probably eleven. I want to say eleven hundred. Yeah, Chris agrees with me. Something like eleven hundred around that area. So yeah. But yeah, I'm all out. I'm I'm gonna pack up for the day because I've run out of stuff to talk about. Um so yeah, that'll do. Have I got everything? I think we've done everything. Yeah. Alright. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, today. Um let's have a quick check on how things are going. Do do. Thanks for everyone who's hung out with me. And uh, thank you, everyone, for all of the super chats as well. Uh, big thanks for that. Lovely to see you all back. Um, and uh, as always, I will be back um, next week with something as well. Caradog will be back from his heckin' spreadsheet convention. Um, and we'll be doing something. No idea what, but you know us. We'll come up with something to do. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Um, I will be streaming on Twitch tomorrow. I'll be streaming Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which is over at twitch.tv slash nethersam. Bam. I'll be streaming on Twitch tomorrow at 7 p.m. UK time. And um, yeah, new videos next week as always. That's it. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Arr! End stream. Arr!